You're listening to littlepodcast.com. Welcome to Born in the 80s, episode 127. I'm your host, John Rowe, joined, as always, by my co-host... Lance. That's right, Lance. What's up? So, Lance, we took a week off. Um, I was unable to record an episode without Lance, try as I might, for the entire week. Um, so this one's going to be coming up probably a little bit earlier than they usually come up. But I wanted, I wanted to talk about... Um, I. Uh, I, I wanted I, to talk about your absence. Well, I know I was on uh, uh, Rob Masashita's show. Yes. T- ten minutes about your favorite yes. movie. And I finally got around to listening to it. To yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think he's got a really great show. Uh, I do love his show. I listened to a couple other episodes. And he's it's a great a host. Great, great idea. Great format. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I went through a couple of them, so yeah. This plug, part of our network, uh, Little Podcast Network, so. There you go. You can check those out at uh, littlepodcast.com. All the sh- all the shows, all four of the shows are up there, so get on it. There's a show called Mad Stage Podcast, and that's like a local theater podcast for around here. The thing that I learned. And there's Running With Scissors. Watching, or listening to my episode. Yep. Was that uh, my favorite movie that I was talking about. Yeah. The guy, uh, Rob, actually knew more about it than I did. Yeah, I know, right? Because he knew the original so well. Yeah, that's he has, true. He, does he have one of those memories, though? He's an encyclopedic is... movie knowledge guy. Okay, Which is yeah. why it's perfect for him to be in that show. No, um, yeah, and, and the funny thing about that is that he tells you to pick your five favorite movies, and then he'll pick the one off of it that is, like, the most interesting to him. Right. Like, he's like, oh, why did you pick that? Like, for me, it was The Last Starfighter. And he right. was like, why did you pick that? And I was like, well, here's the story. I watched that movie like a hundred times when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, you can check that episode out. That one's up too if you go to his website or if you go to the little podcast website, you can find all the back episodes too. Have you, and, ever, have you ever watched a movie twice in a row? Wait, in a row? Yeah. No. Really? You've done this? I did it one time. Okay, what movie? You're well, scared well, to laugh when you hear what movie this is. Okay. Unbreakable. I watched I, twice in a row. <laughs> really? Yeah. And now Unbreakable. Now I'm I'm just trying to think of what that movie is. That's the that's the the M Night Shyamalan movie, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 With uh, Mr. Glass, Bruce Willis, and Samuel Jackson. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I saw that movie once. I don't know what it was. I I just I felt like I had it. And I rented it and I watched it. And then I was and like, you're like, you know I, what? I rented this. I need two viewings. No, I was just I was just thinking. I was like, you know. Maybe you just put that one in again. <laughs> Watched it again a second time all the oh, way through. Oh, man. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever done that. <laughs> I don't like rewatching stuff, though. Like, I, Lauren always – my girlfriend, Lauren, so people that may not know. Sorry, I'm taking ladies. But anyway, um, Lance is fully on the market. Is correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're so pumped. But anyway, so, um, yeah, she I always – I get some uh, – Get some angry text messages this week All again. Right. Well, whatever. We'll we'll get into that later. Whatever. But the um, I think I'm mostly on the market. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, there's um, Lauren likes to watch like movies again and whenever we're like hanging out, she's like, "Let's watch this." And it's like we've seen that. Like I always want to watch something new. I always want to try something new. Watch a new show. Watch a new movie. You know, at least something one of us hasn't seen. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I feel like I'm wasting my time, like rewatching something. Because, I mean, I, I've rewatched television series, like, multiple times. Like, I've watched through The Simpsons, like, a bunch of times. Family Guy, all those shows. Red Dwarf, one of my favorite shows of all time. I've seen that through probably ten times. Wow. Yeah. I love that show. Like, that was a... That was, like, a show I used to... Like, cause, like I have this thing where I like to, when I go to sleep, watch TV when I fall asleep. So, I used to do that. And now that I live with Lauren, um, I just will put stuff on I my... Do kind of, I do kind of enjoy having shows ready to go yeah when i want to go to sleep yeah and put, that's when i that's when i rewatch shows yeah same here and i watch um I right have, now it's family have, guy for me i've yeah, been rewatching. I have, I have three shows and right now it's star trek original series okay 
But I I go I have that Tales from the Crypt and Twilight Zone. I kind of mm. between those three, and they're all very similar shows. Yeah, but um, I kind of cycle through them. And for me, I like to watch shows to, when I fall asleep. To shows that I don't even have to watch, like look at the screen to know what's happening. Like I'm just listening, and it's See, like. You know the I know the wire is no good for rewatching because then I have to watch all of it. Yeah, these other shows are very episodic. Mm-hmm. That's what I like about them. Yeah, with me it's Family Guy. It's like it's just jokes and talking. Yeah, and Family Guy is definitely easy. episodic. Simpsons, Simpsons was the big one. When I was in high school, I used to put the, I had t- tapes of the Simpsons because it was on syndication, and so I would record it at like five o'clock every day. And then, like, the 7 o'clock one I would record, too, so I'd have tapes full of old Simpsons episodes. Right. And I would just put those on to fall asleep. And it was kind of a tradition that's lasted since then, I guess. And I just have an episode on, have it just shuts off after it's done, and I'm asleep by the time it's done. So. I, have a, I have this, because uh, um, uh, your brother has a, <coughs> a Blu-ray player now. Yeah. And I was uh, talking to one of my friends, and, and I was saying, you know, if I ever get into, like, Blu-rays... Which I'm not gonna really, but I was like, here's the thing. You gotta go all in. I'm gonna man. make a fucking. It's a new format. No, no, no. I'm not gonna get all in. <laughs> I, was, I was saying, here's the deal if I'm gonna get into Blu ray. Okay. I am gonna pick 10 movies yeah. that I want on yep. Blu ray, and that will be it. That's what I've done. And I haven't yet made my list, but my list was had no new movies on it. It was yeah. all 80s sci fi, yeah. which is my favorite. Yeah, definitely. That's what I love to watch. You get aliens. Yeah. The thing. Yeah. Everything like that. For me, I have Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill 1 and 2. Um, and I think, well, I bought The Hunger Games just because I wanted to watch it again. And if you bought the Blu-ray on Amazon, you got a download version free so I could watch it right away. And oh, I was okay. like, might as well get the Blu-ray because it comes with a free download. So and it costs the same. But, um, yeah, most of my Blu-rays are, like, either they cost less than $5 or they're movies that I want to watch multiple times. Mm-hmm. Like, that I know I will watch more than once. Like, when... when that's what... It, yeah, that's what... For me, it was... It was it was any... It was more, like, also movies that I enjoy that that have been enhanced by the Blu-rays. Yeah. Yeah, that look better. And, and, and some of these, like, old... It's the older movies that look better because you're seeing them... On a big TV with the widescreen, and they've cleaned it up. Yeah, they've done some like, remastering. RoboCop's a movie that looks amazing on Blu-ray. That looks way better than it did in any version you remember. Oh yeah, ever. oh yeah, and, for sure. And it has an uncut version too. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> things like that. I would probably like to get the Terminator Two on probably, Blu-ray. Yeah, maybe both of them. Maybe I could get a set. With, with yeah, the I'm first sure they'll two. have a set. No. Well, of a set that has like all four, oh, oh. and they're gonna make you buy all four. No, I don't want that. Yeah, but I bet the all four set costs the same as the single two. That's the way it always is. <laughs> and you're like, I guess I could just get this one Rocky movie, or I could get like all seven. Do you think it's odd? Um, okay, Terminator Three. Let's say. Okay. You got these up and coming actors Rise of the and machines. actresses. Oh wait, no, is that four? That's three. Okay. You got uh, Nick Stahl at the time was up and coming, and he was being very popular and things. Prior he, to his, I'm pretty sure he was passed over for the Star Wars prequels. Because mm-hmm. I mean, he he probably was a, a good choice for for Anakin at some yeah, point, for sure. but m- missed out for some reason. And then you have um, Claire Danes, who's been in a lot of stuff, yeah, and yeah, she's yeah. still in a lot of stuff. And it's like you have okay, so you have Nick Stahl, who who who, who he thought he was going to be something. And then you have his career took a stall. Oh yeah, his career stalled, and and then you have uh, Claire Danes who's still working. She's had a great career, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely. Homeland was and they big. were both in this movie, the biggest movie of their careers, right? <laughs> and nobody cares about either of their characters in those movies. Yeah, it's like what I really want to see is, is Arnold Arnold fighting robots. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that whole movie, what, you're just like, get Arnold out here. Right. What's Arnold going to do? What's Arnold think about well, this? And, and, and he's who, just another robot. <laughs> wasn't that movie PG-13 as well? It was. Or wait, no. No, it was R. But it was a light R. Yeah, that was a light R. It didn't even need to be R. No, they just made it R so that people So that they go. felt. I think they felt that if they had made the jump to PG-13 at that point, people would have been pissed. But Salvation was PG-13. Yeah. But then they realized at that point nobody cared anymore. But that rant was It not. didn't have Arnold, so there was no point in it being 
yeah. like the other ones. Christian Bale's rant on that movie was not it was PG-13. was better than anything that, that was, was in the better movie. than the movie. You know what, though? No. No. <laughs> Good <laughs> for line. you. Oh, my God. I'm trying. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that rant. Who's moving that fucking light over there? Stop it. Stop it! <laughs> oh, da, 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 walking through the set, Bob. Oh my God, that I love it. That so we can thank <laughs> the fact that they made that movie so that we can all listen to Christian Bale blow up on some lighting guy forever on set for, on Salvation for like seven this fucking minutes. Terminator movie. Like he's getting into his character so right. deep for this. Terminator he's playing movie. this character that's been played by five other actors. Well, I know, right? It's not like John well, Connor a, is a, a. You still think of Edward Furlong, you know. <laughs> He was the the version yeah. of the character that well, he's, people... got, he's, he's taking on this role. He can't disappoint the fan base, right? Don't you love it when you watch like all the movie promotional material for movies like that? You know, where they're like, "Well, there's a big fan base, and I don't want to disappoint them." And it's like, this is fucking shitty sequel that nobody <laughs> wanted made. And then, you know, they always have like this promo materials done by the studio where they're like, "Well, it felt really great going into this character that so many great actors before me have done." It's like, no, that's not this at all. Right? Like, you're just fucking. This is all lies. <laughs> like bullshit. I love like that. Terminator Salvation is the Tokyo Drift of that franchise. Mm. You know what I mean? What other movies? So it's the, the Tokyo best one. Drift. Is that what of, you're saying? Yeah. Because Tokyo Drift is the best movie of all of those by far. Yeah, Alien Resurrection is the Tokyo Drift of that franchise. Oh, shit. Tokyo Drift is awesome. <laughs> but it's also definitely the weirdest because it has none of the other characters in it. And it still takes place in the future. And it takes place in the they future. They still haven't reached that point no, in the they, story. No, they haven't caught back up to that plot line in, in that yet. Little Bow Wow's in it. Why don't they just... I, I think they're just going to retcon it, right? Well, it's the funny, they don't want to retcon the funny it, but... thing. The funny thing about... All right, now I'm going to spoil the way that Tokyo Drift ends. There's a character that's in all the other movies uh, lately, Han, who's this Japanese racer, who is a character that everybody likes a lot and liked a lot. What movies is he in? Well, he's in Tokyo Drift. Is he in any of the earlier I, No, and I, I oh, believe okay. he's in the fourth, fifth, and sixth of them. And everyone likes him because he's a really kind of a funny guy and he's like totally like off the cuff and he's a ladies' man. Everyone likes this guy, and he's in Tokyo Drift, and he teaches the main character of Tokyo Drift how to drift and race, and um, in Tokyo Drift... And he's a Japanese guy? Yeah. In Tokyo Drift, he's killed by the mob in that movie, by... And, oh my God, who is it? It's Is it to... Tish- no, no. Who's that main actor in that? Sony, Ch- Sony Chiba is... He's in that? Yes, he is. Maybe I do have He's a mob this. boss in this movie. Yeah. Then again, Sonny Chiba being in something has never been a mark of excellence. <laughs> hey, now. All right. But he's been in some good stuff. But anyway, so his character dies in that. Like, saving the other guy. Like, his car gets in a crash and it explodes and he dies. And that takes place in the Does future. Does nitrous blow up? I don't know. <laughs> it takes place in the future. And so now they have this weird position where it's like he is a character that everyone likes – and they don't want to get rid of him, but in the future he dies. And then the character from Tokyo Drift, like, the way that, that Tokyo Drift ends is Vin Diesel shows up and he's like, Hey, I heard you're a friend of Hans. Like, I heard you know he's how to race. Like, hey, yeah. I heard you're a friend of Hans. <laughs> what? <laughs> you just sound like a drunken Harrison Ford. <laughs> I don't know if that's how Vin Diesel. Do I? I don't know how I'm to do trying the, to do his voice. It's, I will say this. Vin Diesel has like the most impossible What if I do voice. a Riddick line? Maybe I can do it better. Okay, let me try one. All right. You're not afraid of the dark, are you? <laughs> what is that? It's not even close. <laughs> you made me laugh halfway through. Okay, okay. Let me try a Vin Diesel accent. All right. I'm, I'm trying to think. I, what, what's some iconic it's a weird way of talking. Diesel lines? He's like, get that carburetor. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> get that carburetor. <laughs> That's a fucking... Did he yeah. have carburetors in those movies? Oh, yeah, they did. Injection. Oh, no, he's got the fucking Hemi, man. He's got the old school charger. The car would get old school blown the fuck off the street. I know. Street. That's the fucking biggest caveat of those movies is he's driving this old, ancient 70s <laughs> dragster. Piece of shit. And it's like this car would get annihilated by all these new cars. But anyway, um, so he's like, I heard you know how to drift or whatever. And then, like, that's how the movie ends. So it's like, oh, this character from Tokyo Drift's going to get folded into the other movies. No. No. No, because nobody, nobody liked it. But no, but Han oh. was 
new Vin Diesel back in the old days, and they just put him which in is the... in which all of the new movies are taking place of now. So it's like we and then Michelle Rodriguez is brought back from the dead, I guess, in the newest one. So it's like, well, she's another situation where I think. Uh, the well, timeline they ret- they ret- somehow they- allows her to be in the new movies too. Well, they retconned her back hey, she, to life. They can was- easily retcon Han not- back to life. By the way, that's not the first time Mishra's been resurrected in a movie franchise. I saw she was in the last Resident Evil movie. She was de- killed in the first one. <laughs> well, you know, you gotta have your Mishrod. I like that though. I like that she's been she's been brought back beyond all. Uh, like, no one would think that that character in either franchise would return. And you know she's returned in both franchises you know what's from the dead. You know what's interesting, though, about an actress like... She gets like, her head cut off, I'm pretty sure, in the first one. You know what's interesting about an actress like Michelle Rodriguez? Is that she gets work. Like, how? Like, what sk- She's not particularly good. She's not bad. But well, it's like, what are we grading here? I think as far as acting goes... She's fine. She's yeah. like a like a six out of ten or seven yeah. out of ten. Yeah. Attractiveness. She's like probably what an eight out of ten. Yeah. It's like what? There are so many better people that they could be putting but in she these has, movies. She has. What? That. What? What? Dra- is somebody like? Oh, I gotta go see this Michelle Rodriguez movie. Well, no, nobody. But but how when is you, she getting in when, movies? When you make these other movies, you need a Michelle Rodriguez type. Oh, okay. You're saying that she's she's a little bit of that Hollywood magic that they throw into the film. She's a she's a woman that that people believe could kick some ass, and that's what okay. stands her apart. I believe. Okay, you know what? I will buy that. That makes sense because she does beat some people up sometime time to time, and and it seems like she seems possible. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if she. I bet if we could interview her, she's probably beating up grown men. Yeah. Well, she's definitely making out with ladies in the sidelines of a Knicks game. All right. If you got Dude, a problem with it, she's going to take it to you. You got to see. Look up pictures. Everyone. Michelle Rodriguez, Knicks game. She's blasted off her ass with alcohol <laughs> and making out with some lady. that like She's not even gay. They were just friends hanging yeah, out right. and making out of the game. Who knows? Dude, if I was hanging out really? with... Really? You don't think she's gay? I, I thought that so. was just a move where she was like... I just, I just assume that. I mean, why would she be making out with another Dude, woman? Drunk chicks make out with other women all the time. Oh, come on, it happens. But she, she's probably both, or, or, or. This is this lady she was lesbian. with is this like socialite. She it's her girlfriend, to, right? It's not her girlfriend. Just some, just a friend. It's a piece of ass for her. whatever. <laughs> I don't know what Michelle Rodriguez is up to, and I don't really care if she's into that. Whatever. But she's wasted in, that, in those pictures, and it's hilarious looking. <laughs> no, but she was an avatar, and she wasn't bad in that. She passed off as a pilot. Oh, she, yeah. She did an all right job. Well, of course. You know what I mean? Wait, who's the villain in that? Is it Chris Cooper? No. no. It's that guy from oh. the Johnny Depp movie, I wish it was, Public Enemies. I wish it was Chris Cooper, because that guy was, that would be awesome. They could get him for the next one. An older version? He dies in that. Well, whatever. Chris Cooper's not dead. He wasn't even How the it. fuck is there not a sequel to Avatar at this point? Well, because it's James Cameron, and he's taking, like, fucking ten years Because that to movie it. was, like, made a bazillion dollars, and they're like, eh. <laughs> it's like Cameron. <laughs> They've been working on him, though. It's They have been? It's, it's a situation where... You wanted to do two movies at once, and it, and they didn't have the scripts and everything. And you're going to get two Avatar movies back-to-back, probably like 2015, 2016. That's one of the few movies. That's what's going to happen. That's one of the few like movies Matrix. I saw twice in like the Like Matrix. Theaters. You saw The Matrix. It was like six years before the sequel. <coughs> it took forever. Yeah, it took them six years to like, reload. What's going on? Matrix reloaded. There was yeah. a mistake, too. They should have just done one sequel. But then again... Matrix, the Matrix sequels, uh, I mean, I think we can both agree they're the best part of the trilogy. Oh, my God, yes. I mean, of course. <laughs> There's Holy so many great crap. shots. I mean, what, what can you say, though? How can you like the first Matrix movie and not, not like the second and third? Do you know what I like? More they're the than... same thing. They're the same thing. It's all like a bunch of, like, rampant motorcycles into buildings and shooting things with in slow motion. What? They're like, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> it's like, oh, what's terrible now? When did you not see the first movie? You know what's hotter when than... When this happened constantly? You know what's hotter than Carrie Ann Moss? A six years older Carrie Ann Moss. Well, that's A not true. A six years farther into middle age. That's not true. Carrie Ann Moss. Yeah, that was one of those things in those movies where you're just like, is she still hot? I, I don't... 
She's looking like a mom now. Like the now. Matrix trilogy, though. <laughs> you know, it's like the best. No offense to her, but she's not the sexy, like latex wearing, gun shooting, sunglasses lady. She looks like she could take the bus to school and pick up her children. <laughs> like, but I don't know. I think though, I think though that those movies might be the best bad trilogy of movies. <laughs> like they're just fun. You just put them in. Let's watch a Dude, Matrix. Did you watch Matrix Reloaded? And we were watching it. It Dude, was hilarious. Fucking. Morpheus like takes on like a freaking semi with a samurai sword at some point. It's incredible. I just like I just enjoy the distinction that some people say, "Oh no, it got bad with the second one." It's like, "Come on." No. It was always kind of bad. It just decided to go and naturally evolve to its next step, which was more ridiculousness. <laughs> right. And the third movie, which is even more ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, fucking A. Whatever. I didn't... I thought the, the like, last fight scene was, was pretty pretty cool at the end. I don't know. I, like, I had fun. I mean... I didn't they, hate it. Are they, are they... Do these movies belong in AFI's top 100? Probably not. No. <laughs> Maybe the first one. <laughs> no. Just for what... I don't know. I like that first one. I feel like it holds up. I mean, I like them all, but I mean, I mean, then again, if I had to pick a hundred movies better than Matrix, maybe I can't do it. Maybe I get to number That's sixty. True. I start putting Matrix sequels in there. Oh God, I I don't know. You you. I feel like you've seen enough movies to yeah. Hopefully not stick in some Matrix. Sequels. I could put at least twenty Clint Eastwood movies in the top one hundred. Oh I'll pad it out. Those Clint Eastwood movies are great. What about? The Star Wars trilogy, Lance. Ooh, what where, about it? Where would you put that in the top 100? You put that in there? I would. Th- I would definitely. Yeah, I'm trying. We to, I'm trying about, to segue here. We're talking about this because, uh, yeah, I, 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 I went through and I watched all six what Star Wars this? movies. What spurred this? Well, I uh, was was hanging out with someone who had. Uh, they had the original trilogy, and we have something to watch uh, at, yep. her, at her place. And I oh, so you're was, watching Star Wars with a lady? That's right. She'd never seen it. No, she was a big fan, but Ooh. I didn't. I didn't know. You find yourself a catch there. And um, wait, she's big, and then she like tells you, she's like, I'm a huge fan of the Star Wars trilogy, and I'm an even bigger fan of the original trilogy yeah. of the fucking prequels. <laughs> you're like, oh Jesus. <laughs> uh, anyway. But um, Attack of the Clones, baby. So so yeah, I watched the trilogy and uh, and it was the original trilogy without the special. Effects. So you watched the original? How did the, was that on DVD? Because I don't think those are on DVD. They were like like pirated DVDs. Okay, okay. Because I know they're on VHS. They did put these out on DVD briefly in like 2010 oh, or so. It was so. like a rare fucking pack that you could have bought with these originals. And at that point, everybody already had the other cuts, so the people weren't they didn't sell as much uh, as people thought. Yeah, I bought the other cuts. Because everybody else already thought they had them. Yeah, I brought, I bought the original trilogy DVD cut when it came out for like fifty or sixty, and that was fine. And I just but the thing that I really realized when I was watching these movies was that I didn't know them as well as I thought I did. Oh uh, yeah, and I was legitimately. Uh, engrossed in these movies, I was like, "What's gonna happen?" And every time, like something, uh, one of those motorbikes blew up in the in Jedi, I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> like I didn't see it coming at all. I really, I mean, yeah, I know, I knew, I knew the big plot points, but I, I, yeah. didn't, I forgot everything else. Wow! So it's like watching a new movie for me. It was amazing. Uh, I was like, "These movies are amazing." I think those. Movies, I was blown away. I've seen probably. Oh, I don't know, 30, 30 times maybe. See, for me, it's more like two and a half times. Mm. And that half I was, grew up. I mean, I saw these when I was six, seven. Viewing, I, I probably watched them on VHS tapes yeah. that were taped off TV. But, yeah, right? Uh, they're great. Oh, my God, so good. I absolutely, like, just growing up as a kid, like, I had Star Wars toys. I had everything. Like, that was my jam. Was Star Wars. So, like, I grew up on that shit. Like, and grew up watching the Ewok Adventures. That's right. And we watched one of those. We tonight. watched one of those this evening. The Car- Caravan of We Courage. talked over a lot of it, but well, it was kind of like pedestrian. It's, it's, type a, talk, of it's movie. a talk over type of movie <laughs> where there's a very threadbare plot. And if you're into Ewoks, you know, you're into it. It was and pretty cool. We though. actually came up with this theory, though, that, like, if you, you can tell how old you are by whether or not you think Ewoks are awful or you said that no lauren did or lauren said that. yeah 
And it's true, though. Yeah, I said, if you I up, opened it up, and I said we were watching Ewok Adventures, and yeah. I said, look, I just watched the, all the Star Wars movies. Yeah. I have no problem with the Ewoks whatsoever. There's a bunch of goofy characters in the first movie, and I point out the sand people. Yeah. Which are basically kind of the same yeah. thing. They act the same way. They have the yep. same weird sounds when they move. Uh-huh. People love those. Yeah. But for some reason, and I, I don't, I plain don't understand people not under, not, not liking Ewoks. Yeah. Because I always thought Ewoks were a classic part of Star Wars. Yeah, they're fun. They, I mean, they beat just... up the, the, the stormtroopers. You know, they, they use their primitive might. And, you know, they, they have that really sad scene where one of them gets blown up. I remember, and it's like trying to like get it to move, and he's like, "No," <laughs> and then it's dead, and you're like, "Oh yeah, man, this one is, of them they lose one." This is sad. <laughs> and then, meanwhile, a million stormtroopers are being blown into pieces, <laughs> and you're like, "Oh, this one little Ewok." <laughs> uh, no, no, it, and I think it's because the Ewoks are very kid friendly, and if you watch those movies when you were a kid, you know, you you didn't, I guess, but like I no, did when no. I was like eight, and I was like, "This is fun." Whereas, like, if you went in as an adult, you'd be like, what is this? Ewoks? You know what I mean? Like, I guess. I don't know. Work for me, though. You know. And, um, yeah, and I I also thought um, the characters that I never enjoyed previously was, uh, for some reason, and I think this has to do with, this is why I liked them so much, these movies, the second, or the recent viewing. Yeah. Because I never paid attention to these movies when I watched them before. I yeah. just saw, like, I just paid attention to the action scenes. Mm-hmm. So I never, like, cared about C-3PO or, or R2-D2. Yeah. And then I have realized what great characters they are. Oh, yeah, they're fun. When I'm watching the movies. I'm like, they're so funny. They C-3PO is hilarious. He mm-hmm. is. He says it, he is wrong 100% of the <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, that's right. But he is so positive that he's right. Yeah. And R2-D2 is talking to him back and... and I think it's such a great relationship between the two droids. Oh, and it, it totally is, too, because, like, you have that, you know, R2-D2 does this little beep, boop, beep, and then, like, you know, c 3 is like, no, I'm not stupid, you know? And it's like, <laughs> oh, he's calling him dumb. Oh, like, yeah, that's yeah, funny. that part is great. Yeah, yeah you, you know, figure it out. It's just great. It's like you can tell R2 is just giving him sass back, and you're just like, this is great. <laughs> and he doesn't get it at all. He's a sassy little robot. <laughs> oh, I love those movies. I mean, like, that is my childhood right there. I can't even point out is so many, and you know what? Uh, and, and Jedi is the one that that I think the internet. Uh, it's the internet that, that that spawns a lot of the hate for Jedi, yep. which is totally undeserved. I mean, most people watch Jedi and realize it's a classic. Dude, there are so no many great lines in there. Remember when they're trying to get away from like the fucking um, uh, not the Death Star when they're in the Imperial like shuttle and like they're like, oh, I hope this code works that we're doing. And they're like, what do you do? I don't know fly casual you know like there's <laughs> great lines in that movie and like there's great scenes that the battle the space battle with uh you know admiral akbar you know it's a trap like all that shit's awesome my um you know moments that sit out in that movie specifically because you know everybody knows the first two are great but then there's some people that want to shit talk the third one or say it's not as good but and it, it it's almost just as good as the other two. Exactly, the other two are so good though. Right, you know. But this one, uh, oh, and it has the start with the Jabba's ship and the fight there with Boba Fett. Oh man, that that movie starts so. I great also too. I also love uh, Han giving the Falcon back to uh, Lando yeah. for that last that yeah. last mission. Mm-hmm. And that weird and gross like, mouth. Take care there. of her and um, yeah. And that was funny because, yeah, you found out in the second movie that he won the <laughs> yeah. ship from Lando. On, like, Lando a card game. In a card game. <laughs> and I'm sure Han wasn't uh, dealing from the bottom of the deck. Yeah, exactly, was, right? Yeah, right? He totally He's stole a it. a smuggler. <laughs> and um, and uh, the other thing I thought was really great, I love how <clears throat> the movie is, there's this whole plot going on with that, that Endor planet, right? Uh-huh. Yep. And they explain everything. I don't have to go into that again. Yep. But in the midst of it all, you have uh, Luke and and Vader and Sidious, mm-hmm. and it's like this all. It's like a big dilemma, like, and the, and the whole point of the movie is that, to me anyway, is Sidious is 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 saying, okay, uh, you think you know something, right? 
what if I kill all of your friends right now? <laughs> Will you then join me? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, no, I won't join you. And he's like, and now I have done this. And the, like, it was like, it was the, the, the movie on the planet Endor. It was directly impacting f- his thought process. Yeah. which I thought was great. And it's, it's, it was this whole dilemma and it was, Three players and and yeah. uh, the forest and even, moon of and, and the thing that that Sidious takes for granted is that Vader could also change his mind, which yeah. he never thought. Yeah, but. totally. I love that. <laughs> that moment is great, though, where like uh, Luke's getting electrocuted like crazy by Palpatine, who's lost at this point because obviously the you know the the shield got down. They're losing fight out there with the Star Destroyers. Luke's still not turning. He's kind of just shooting lightning, and his fucking dad. Darth Vader's like, fuck this shit. Right. Like, this guy's awful. Like, right. Why am I doing this? Like, at this point where he just realizes he's being evil. And, and and you know what? And this is where I maybe start opening up discussion into the prequels. But there is a scene yep. in, in Revenge of the Sith yep. that is identical to that. Yeah. When he says he's got Dooku with his hands cut off. Yep, and he's got the sabers on his neck, uh-huh. and he looks at him and he's like, "Kill him!" Mm-hmm. And he's like, "I don't think I should." And he's like, "Do it!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you realize that was he was like, "Look, you're more powerful than him. I don't need him anymore. Just get rid of him." No, yeah, totally. And that was exactly what's happening in Return of the Jedi mm-hmm. with Luke. Yep. Being beating Vader in a yep. battle, and then he's just fucking kill him. Yeah, and Vader didn't like being tossed to the yep. side like Dooku was. Yep, That's totally. what I started to feel like. When yeah. I love that, I, I just love the, the the fucking the. I just love that. This is a Star have, Wars podcast. Yeah, right in, now, in, just in, to in, let you know. In um <laughs> in in Attack of the Clones. When Dooku and Yoda fight, it's two seven year old, seven hundred year old men fighting. <laughs> yes. oh, I like, like the weird. Uh, I love the, uh, his bent lightsaber that he has. Dooku's got like the curve. I like on those it. creepy smiles that uh, Dooku's doing during that fight. Oh yeah, and his like crooked bottom teeth. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, ha ha. <laughs> he's creeping you out. You know, he's doing a good I job. I need to go off and it. record the voiceovers for a Rhapsody album now. <laughs> If oh you listen to Rhapsody, you will understand. Through the I fire don't... and the flames. <laughs> oh, my God. To the fire. That guy <laughs> I know that song. is awesome. I love him. Like, Christopher Lee, he's, like, n- pushing 90 now, right? He's right. fucking old. And he still works. He's still, <laughs> like, like, I'm still going to do shit. Like, I don't know. Isn't That's that cool. what's cool, though, about, like, Star Wars is... You can have characters that that seem less than ideal for duels, mm-hmm. yet yet can be more powerful than Alec, the ones. Alec who, Guinness, you know, we're talking about, you know, like fucking all this cool shit going on. Yeah, I mean, uh, Emperor Palpatine's old, but he still can, you know, beat up Luke a little bit. You know, he's it's got just, the lightning. Well, yeah, you can't. The Force lightning is deadly. Yeah. Or Sith lightning. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, and they have like that lightning animated. There's that moment where he shocks him, and the lightning you see in his teeth. Right. And he's just like, ah, <laughs> Jesus. That would hurt so much. <laughs> like, you can feel it in your teeth, just that electricity. And so you said you watched the prequels, too. Yes. And what were your thoughts? My thoughts, which were I would previously like to my- pretty negative as far as the first two movies go, I, and then I have yeah. always maintained that I enjoyed the third one. Yeah. And my thoughts are, I love the first one, because it came out when I was 14, and I saw it in theaters, and the pod race blew my mind. I thought it was all right. Second one, I saw when I was in like high school, and I was like, this is kind of lame. Like, Not a lot happened. It felt like a bridge movie. And the third one, I was like, oh, it was pretty good, actually. They right. did some cool fight scenes, and... They moved the story, and Anakin became evil, so it was all good. But and yeah. and, and my opinion was interesting, but yeah, well here, okay. My opinion was the first movie. Uh, it was all right. It had it was like kind of like messed up a little. There's bit. always a bigger fish. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so many great lines. In that I did want to mention. Yeah. Did people think? I remember hearing something about Jar Jar Binks. Qui Gon Jinn was a great character, by the way. 
Yeah, I liked oh, him. Oh, he's awesome. Anyway, continue. Sorry. And Yeah, and they didn't want him to take on The Apprentice, but he did and yep. everything. Yeah, it was really and cool. And I, I also liked how he, how he kind of, uh, he was when kind he of died, th- like the last thing he said, he's like, he's like, uh, you need to take him on as your apprentice, yeah. which I thought was really cool. Well, I just like it because he's like the loose cannon Jedi. You know what I mean? He's like – so like I always think of Jedi as like – And then you find out he was trained by Dooku, yeah. which is interesting. Yeah. I always so. thought like like Jedi were like priests basically because they live in this weird celibate order and shit. And he's like the priest that has like the guitar and like rides a motorcycle. <laughs> he's, you know what I mean? He's like the fucking like. Oh, I'm gonna do a sermon, an all singing sermon today, you know. And he's like, no, like, you can't do that. It doesn't follow church <laughs> regulations, you right. know. That's what he's like, though. Like, and and you know, he's like, don't fight him, and he does. And he's like, we can't take this kid on. And he's like, we have to, you know, and. And it, you know, ends up equal, and it, cause he will bring equalizing to the force. Little did they know, is because he will bring evil to the force yeah. and wipe out most of the force users. Because there's not balance if it's all good. Exactly. No, and that's what they didn't realize right. at the point. Um, anyway, but I'm sorry. But he probably, if they hadn't gotten him, he probably just would have been bad the whole time. Because mm-hmm. I mean, he grew up a slave. Yeah. Uh, if they hadn't gotten him and trained him, yeah, he would just be eventually. A fucking cra- some Sith would have found him. I guarantee you know I mean? it. Palpatine I guarantee would have heard Palpatine about it. Palpatine would have found him. Of course. And he would have just been pure evil the, all the way through. <coughs> yeah. I'm not saying just because you're a slave you would be pure evil. <laughs> I'm saying he had that. <coughs> a big major part of his character was that that he had that hatred for the people who kept him and his mom. Yeah. As slaves. And that was never going to change, no matter what. You know what I didn't get about that? So he gets to go free. His mom's still slave? Yeah. Like, Padme couldn't have swung a couple hundred fucking quatloos or whatever it is to, like, free her? Like, ever go work at a gas station? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> like, they could have brought her to Coruscant and had her, like, work as an aide or something. Like, what the fuck? Like, buy him off and of then, Watto. And, 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 and I thought about this, and I, I, was, I was wondering about that, too. Mm-hmm. And I guess... The thought processes on that is that the Jedi are so – they take you from your parents when you're young anyway. Yeah. You to the point where they gotta be cut off. literally don't care. And they don't – You devote your life to the They should probably have, have, have bought her and, and had her live somewhere else. Safe at least, right? Right. <laughs> but instead – it, it's part of their arrogance too. They're kind of arrogant in their own ways, I think. Mm-hmm. Because uh, they th- they they think that you should be celibate and um, you shouldn't have any any family members to tie you down, mm-hmm. and I think that's kind of arrogant and kind of odd. Yeah, but it fucking burns them, you know. <laughs> like, there's a couple moments in that. So when he finds out that she's been like killed by Tusken Raiders. And then he gets, like he say, rescues her, and she it's yeah, like that yeah. great Star Wars thing that happens like her her now that that person's there she's she's has no able more will to, die. to live yeah she's able to die it's like like uh uh yoda dies yeah when he visits him as again as soon as luke shows up he's like all right time for me to, to pass out and right. turn into it happens dust. a lot in this series no um so like he kills all of like the tuscan raiders right including like the women and children and right. all that shit and it's like but they don't show that no, they show them kill like three of them and then they cut away. Yeah, and it's like, dude, show the whole fucking thing, man. Like, well, it adds a little bit more weight to it, you know. When it was just like, it was oh. still plenty of weight. Well, they were still trying to like. He was still a good character though for the rest of the movie. Other yeah. than that, until the third one, where he murders children for some reason. Well, he's, he's there's or- a bit of a snap that happens in that to. third one that I know, but it's like, you don't go from like. Okay, maybe I agree with this guy a little bit about some of his ideas about the Force and how the Jedi are kind of limiting us to let's murder children. Right. <laughs> because there's that scene is like a fucking horror movie where he like comes up in the little kids and he's just got his lightsaber and he's like – and the kids are like, huh? And it's like he killed all of them. And you're like, oh, I, my gosh. I see this, though. <laughs> that's horrifying. The reason I, I think that that's still a great scene, though – It is a great scene. Is because – the 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 younglings as they were, the younglings. He murdered younglings. Still look up to him like yeah. he's a. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. He comes in and they're like, like Anakin, yeah. like, like Anakin. It's great to see like, you. Hey, guess what? You're all gonna die now. And right. it's like, whoa, 
shit. Like, what? Like the, like, the prequel movies are a story about, like, kind of the hubris of 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 the jedi and yeah. of uh of the the republic mm-hmm. and how 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 even if you have things going your way it doesn't take much yeah it, it doesn't take much for you to fall and it and they fall hard oh yeah oh my Quick, god quickly hard and quickly and irreparably mm-hmm. yoda and obi-wan just uh hide for yeah. 20 years basically They're because like, they are lost so badly there was no point in them like trying to do a resistance or anything. And Ewan McGregor in twenty years turns into Alec Guinness somehow. I could buy that, right? Mm, twenty <laughs> years, maybe forty years. Forty. That's an How issue. How old was he in the last one? He was like thirty, right? It's like yeah, but fucking Alec Guinness is not fifty in that fucking movie. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the time dilation a little bit. You know, you know, when you go off on your own, you age faster, maybe. I don't know, fucking know. <laughs> Even though Yoda lived to be like 700 or whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Or when you spend all your time talking to Qui-Gon Jinn's ghost, you age faster. That's true. <laughs> hey, Obi-Wan, what's going on in the sand desert today? <laughs> Qui-Gon? <laughs> I would Seriously? like to see them in the new ones. Mm-hmm. Briefly, I don't want to talk about the new ones too much. but We can talk a little bit. Uh, I mean, they've rumored to be starting them. They've got the principal cast pretty much together. I would like to All see the, the old process back. of how lightsabers are made, finally. Yeah. But other than that... Uh, There's a crystal. That's one thing I know. Is it a crystal? There's a crystal in there. Okay. I know this from multitudes of books, games, Star Wars comic books and shit that I've read because I know all the extended universe, <laughs> my friend. Like, I was way into that in high school. The thing, the thing that's really great, though, about, like, all of the movies is that and, – and, and, and I didn't – you get the whole story. Now you can watch them all. And, I mean, I, obviously I, I could have done this ten years ago and I didn't mm-hmm. because I thought the prequels were bad. But the reason I thought they were bad was because I didn't watch them in sequential order. Mm-hmm. Like, they were weird to watch once every three years. And if you didn't refresh yourself with a previous installment, Mm -hmm. it could get confusing. You're tempting me to watch Phantom Menace now. I'm telling you, you're going to watch it. (laughs) You're going to watch the prequels. I'm sorry. You also had a question, something you want to say about Gungans as well. Gungans? Yeah, you said you were going to talk about Jar Jar Binks a little bit. Oh, right. Yeah. I didn't want to. I cut you off. I didn't want to lose that track. People, okay. I remember hearing something about... Do people think that Jar Jar Binks was racist? Yeah, I guess. Because that's a stretch. It's that's a, a far a, stretch. It's a bit of a stretch. Because here's my logic behind the reason that, first of all, there's no way George Lucas is a racist at all. I don't know. I saw that, but that mad TV sketch. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. That sketch is amazing. <laughs> Will Sasso plays him. But the language that, that Jar Jar uses is in no way, shape, or form. Yeah, it's not at all. It does not. The language of of any group of minorities. No, it's insane. Like the way he talks is insane. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like crazy. I I don't know what he speaks. Fucking, Gungan is yeah. what's going on. You know, he 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 yells really loudly. He's more of a cartoon. He's basically a cartoon character. Like he yells, he flaps his tongue, and he, he's crazy. Like, well, I never understood. He's a, not a good character. Yeah, he's he's annoying. He talks too much. Yeah. He's kind of like that 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 third the Chris wheel Tucker type of yeah of the alien race, <laughs> if you will. Sorry, Chris Tucker. I actually, like, Chris but he's Tucker. not like, yo, what's up? <laughs> what is he turned to Andrew Dice Clay? Briggs. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, oh, there's Gungans in here. <laughs> oh, face down, ass up. <laughs> so that's the Gungan way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the Gungan way. <laughs> Fuck. What was up with Boss Nass? So Boss Nass is like a Gungan as well, but he's gigantic. I never got that. I don't even know who the, he is. That's like the boss of the Gungans. Remember oh, that he, big guy. Yeah, are they, are they, are they the same? Just, I guess. Well, it's like when you go to the Wookiee planet and there's like a super badass Wookiee. Yeah, and it's like he's in charge. <laughs> so you're just saying the that giant one who has all the braids and stuff, and it's like, yeah, he's the best. I think that in that, and I think in that movie that they said that's like Chewbacca's father. I think, right? Oh, okay, is he running yeah. that planet? I believe so. Yeah. So it's like, I think they make reference to like that as like Chewbacca's family member, or like relative. So you're also, like, oh yeah, Chewbacca. The trilogy 
The originals? Yeah. One final thing about them. I fucking love, I don't know what movie this is. There's a shot where they're, like Han Solo is walking through a, a hangar. And he, like Millennium Falcon's being repaired. Yep. And Chewbacca is sitting on top of it with a welding torch. Empire Strikes Back. I love it. Yep. Just the visual of Chewbacca with a welding mask. Yeah. And the thing. And they get into like a fight and he's like yelling at him and he like pulls the mask thing yeah. up and they like fucking have it out for a second and he calls him like a piece of like garbage or a furry. Or laugh it up, fuzzball. Right. That's that line that's right part's there. That's hilarious. Oh my god. Oh, that stuff is so good. And the, and, and that movie for the, the the scenes between Leia and Han in that movie are just incredible. Like just the tension between them and like him when I, being that scumbag and scoundrel. I mean, and, and I mean, I know the originals are better, but what I was saying was when I watched the new ones, I wanted to watch them without with an open mind, with right? An open mind. Yeah. And even when there was, like, cheesy acting and stuff, I tried to still get into the scenes. Mm-hmm. And I thought there was actually some good stuff in there mm. uh, if you watch them that way. I honestly think I've seen Clone Wars. I, the last time I saw it was, like, 2006. Like, it's been so long. There's some great stuff with Jango Fett and, and, uh, Django and the Clone Fett Army. Django Fett Unchained. I, I, yeah. <laughs> he fights a man, Dingo. Oh, my God, Django. That was great though. Um, yeah. In the next one, they gotta they can't have Boba Fett though. They gotta have a new Bo- uh, uh, like a descendant of Boba Fett. Uh, yeah, D- Boba Fett. It's been son. thirty years. Even if he survived that thing, yeah, they have Boba Fett. Oh, they have Boba Fett. Back. The part seven. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a new one, dude. He was di- being digested by that fucking Sarlacc, dude. He's it's like Boba Fett the second. Well, then. in the extended universe, Boba Fett fights his way out right. from inside, and he, he like fucking. But as far as the movies out. are concerned, they should probably just have another Fett. You know what the worst part about Boba Fett is? Is that he's got this crazy, like fucking children, or I don't know what it is. They love Boba Fett somehow. But all you see of Boba Fett in the fucking movies are him. A, talking to Darth Vader in Empire Strikes Back. B, kidnapping Han at the end of it. And then in, in, in Return of the Jedi, him being immediately killed. Like, in hilarious fashion. Like, his jetpack gets attacked, and he, like, flies off and lands, and then is eaten immediately. And it's like, how is this Boba Fett? Like, because he's like, Boba Fett? Boba Fett's here. And then, like, he, Boba Fett's immediately taken apart and it's like is this guy's and then, and he's got this badass reputation somehow and how do you see where do you get that from i i tell you i think it is because the mask for well one. yeah but also that that scene when uh like han is trying to follow him and he he, he turns the corner and thinks he's like following him uh-huh. and he just gets shot at and i thought that was really cool mm. but that wasn't it when he hits the jet pack yeah in jedi it's like I forgot he had the fucking thing on him. Yeah, and I was like, "Whoa!" Like I was blown away. Yeah. Like jetpack. I was like, instantly, jetpack's one of the coolest things you could think of. To That's have true. In that universe. That's very true. And and nobody has it. Badass. It's the jetpack. It's the jetpack and the mask. The laser blaster. He could maybe he needs another weapon. I think. Well, in in, in the in the, all of the other fiction, he's got. I mean, two. the laser he's blast du- he's and another blasters. maybe two guns he could have. I but it's like usually two pistols he's shooting. Oh, okay. so that's pretty badass. But yeah, yeah not in that one. The, the problem is once you get just once you're one on one with the Jedi, with the laser <sighs> blaster, as 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 Jango Fett finds out, mm-hmm. you fucked. That is one of the best <laughs> moments in like fucking cinema for me as a kid. Is that 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 scene in Jedi? where they're taken out to be killed and like fucking this amazing joke in family guy when they did the the third parody of star wars where so like luke's getting sent out and he walks out on the thing and he does that like little nod to r2 who puts out like the lightsaber he's gonna shoot at him and this amazing joke in family guy just where he nods at r2 and then r2 nods back at him and they nod like for like 30 seconds it's <laughs> just like what that scene felt like because they're all like mm-hmm. and he looks over at lando and he's like yep all right, we're ready to do this. And, like, he does that jump. And that moment is so amazing because it's just, like, they think they're going to kill him. And he jumps and he flips and he lightsabers someone. And then in this epic fight where the skips are, like, falling and, like, Lando almost falls in the pit. And, like, Luke, you know, Han saves him. And I don't know. It's just one of the coolest scenes. I, and and the, thing that, the thing that's so great about Jedi yeah. is 
That's the movie where... That was my favorite movie as a kid. That's the movie where Luke becomes a master. Yeah. He is a fucking master. Oh, yeah. He's fucking flipping around, lightsaber and dudes. His demeanor. Just the way he walks. Yeah, he acts like a badass. The confidence he has. Like, just the confidence. Yeah, when he shows up to talk to Jabba. He's walking the plank. He's got this shit-eating grin on his face almost. I love it. Or when he talks to Jabba and he's like, Jabba, I need my friend back. He's like, you will give me him back. And and the mind tricks don't work. Right. He's using the Jedi mind trick. And you know, and and oh, he kills the he kills the fucking rancor in that fucking movie. Oh right, that movie's so good. Right, like he fucking kills a rancor with a fucking rock. Like, if you're gonna rip on Jedi, you got too much time on your hands. Yeah, because that okay. movie's great. Well, people that like to rip on Jedi rip on the Ewoks, and that's and it. The Ewoks are great too. And it's such a small part of the movie, though, when you think about it. And the Ewoks are there for the speeder chase. Which is one of the coolest scenes ever. Oh yeah, you know and like, oh I love the stormtroopers with their visors. Yeah, I love the visors. Scout ones. troopers. Though my favorite known? type of stormtrooper, easily, and it's very brief. With the Cobra Commander ones. The Cobra Commander ones. With the fucking you know what snow, I'm talking about. The snow fucking outfit ones. You their... see like two of them, but it's the best. Yeah, they have like ghost masks basically. Yeah, they look badass. It's so cool. They got to bring those back, right? Uh, maybe. I don't think there's going to be any stormtroopers in the new movies, though. Because it's all over. The Empire's over. It's a oh. new It's a new evil Bruin, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. No, what's interesting about those new movies they were talking I about guess. is that originally they were like, we want to have the old actors come back, Han Solo, Leia, Luke, come back and just have small roles and like hand it off to the new cast. Right. And J.J. Abrams was like, fuck no. We're making these movies. He did that already in Star Trek, and he decided – he's probably like, you know what would have been really great? If I could have had Kirk and Nemo. Exactly. And he's like, but I couldn't do it because the previous movies fucked it up for me. Yeah. And he's like, but I have a chance here yeah, to he's do like, it. He's I, like, I could do these it These people will work. We can make it work where they're 30 years older. You know, like whatever. Isn't that what we really want to see anyway? I want to see them all back as themselves. Like you can have new characters in there for sure. To but, be the leads. But even. Yeah. These, the older characters will be supporting. Exactly. But they, but need they to, can still but be they part need, of the story. Exactly. They need to be a big part of the story. Not Luke, a cameo. Luke needs to be going off and looking for Jedis on his own. Like and have a couple scenes where it's just Luke, you know, like – couple scenes where it's just Han. Well, I you think know? Luke will have an apprentice and he'll be... Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. And but, yeah, him cool and stuff. another. But exactly. it makes a total sense because, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's... it's You give Luke his like, age, a ben, like an Obi-Wan Kenobi role in the pre- preview ones, you know? And, and like Star he's Wars, in a ton of those Star movies. Star Wars is a series where, where, like I was saying, you had, or you said, you had uh, an 80-year-old Christopher Lee versus, like... Yoda was like another like seven hundred seven hundred years is. old, and uh, and it works. And so so there's no reason why why Luke and Han and Leia yeah. can't work in the new movies. Exactly. You just have to acknowledge their age, and say and build so around. What? It. That's what happens when you get old. Yeah, you still run shit. Right. You know the fucking empire. If you were trying, is gone, if the if new you were Republic. trying to shoehorn Luke into being the star again, then you would be making a mistake. But with him being an older Jedi, mm-hmm. he will be good. Yeah, medium but, roles, you know. Though I, though I was gonna say, the the one thing that makes me a little nervous is they 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 are losing that. Uh, do you think that if they have questions, they call up George Lucas and they can ask him, like, or does he have nothing to do with these? Because that would be very useful, I think, to find out, like, like, oh, I just want to make sure. I we'll just want to know what you your thoughts were on this if it comes up. You know what I mean? I guess we're I'm in not, uncharted Star Wars I'm not, territory. I'm not as 100% with you on this because of all the expanded universe stuff. I I know, but there's so much that Lucas it, didn't write that's like wouldn't canon. It, wouldn't it be good though to know what he thinks though about things in the movie Yeah, or, he's going to say Han shoots last. He's going to say throw some CG well, those are bad throw some CG do-backs in there. Let's get some fucking extra <laughs> X-wing shots. Let's have Jabba talk to him in CG again. Like no, I don't know. I don't know. I but the the, the thing <laughs> is that the uh the movies have so much cohesion right yeah. now as they are. Yeah. That I'm just I'm just a little worried. I'm like I wish that they could have like a red phone or something to call George Lucas. <laughs> Well, I think one of the just week- to like on the big stuff yeah. where like would this happen? Like, could we do this? Yeah, I don't know. I just wish they would like if they would have the opportunity to. But I'm sure he has nothing to do with it. He's he's done with it. Oh yeah, he handed it all off. You know, 
four billion dollars. The new ones, I'm sure, will will inject uh, action and 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 some other things that have been. There have been action in the other movies, and there are a lot of great lightsaber duels in the prequels. But I feel some great though, chase sequences, some gunfights. I mean, there's some stuff. The, the new movies are probably going to excel in ways that the other ones didn't, as far as um, drama and and character development, which I thought was still pretty. Yeah, you know, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, totally. Acting sometimes was yeah subpar. Or worse, even full of Academy Award-winning actors, though those films. I do, I, yeah, right, yeah. Fucking, uh, what's her name? Uh, Natalie Portman. She won an Samuel Academy Jackson. Award later. Samuel Jackson. He won one, right? He know. had to have he one. Fucking, even if he doesn't, he deserves. He's he been should, I'm just gonna pretend he has one. Oh, I think he did. Did he win one for Pulp Fiction? I think he might have. I think the Pulp Fiction didn't win Best Picture, but it, he, I think he did win for Best Probably Actor. Probably something. He even if he doesn't, we know he's how, Samuel we know, Jackson. We know he's caliber. he doesn't need Academy Award. No, he doesn't need awards. We know where he stands and, in acting uh, ability. Christopher Lee, ha- no, <laughs> no, but he, we know he's great though. He's a great actor. Yeah, I mean, you got all these classic acting people. I mean, in these movies, um, who's gonna be the villain? It's gonna be interesting. What is gonna be the plot of these movies? Yeah, that'll be fun. Well, the original, and it's only a year away. Yeah, the original, like, like, and like. The original continuation of Star Wars was the um, the Thrawn trilogy, which is which are amazing. They're written by and I can't fucking remember the name of this guy. He wrote these awesome books. Uh, Timothy Zahn wrote these awesome books. Those three books, amazing, and they're like immediately what happens afterwards. And it's Luke's looking for people that got the Force, so he's going around to all these planets. There is one like general like. And were these based on story outlines by George Lucas? No. They were just written. These, uh, these are written by, by Timothy Zahn, but these were approved by Lucas. Do you ever hear f- these rumors that George Lucas has written uh, like like outlines or something for seven, eight, nine, but he never did him? I just wonder what's going on yeah, with those. I have no clue. But um, so in in these movies, Luke's looking for new Jedi. Um, Han and Leia are dealing with the fucking fallout with like Corellia and all this shit going on, and Coruscant and the new government. And she's like leading it now, basically. And um, and it's just interesting because there's this th- Admiral Thrawn who is this rogue guy who was way off when the Death Star blew up. And he's like, you know what? I'm keeping this going. You know what I mean? I got my fleet. And he's like – he was like the fucking fleet. He was like the fucking um, Rommel, you know, like the fucking crack right. team of the best fucking like Star Destroyer Like when people pilots. started to split off yeah. and go their own ways – he probably executed a few, few people and said set a new standard. And well, said, he, was, Look, he was the leader, basically. We're staying together, God oh, damn yeah. it. Well, and he finds a, a, a kind of a crazy force-using guy who's kind of sithy a little bit. And they kind of run their own shit. And they find these dreadnoughts that were supposedly hidden somewhere in space. And they're these terrifying, like, huge, like, bigger-than-Star Destroyer ships. And they're... Like blowing up worlds All of the and Star stuff. Destroyers. It's great, and and, and the Super Star Destroyers. And like he's this tactical genius, and there's all these like crazy like I don't know. There's just so much like tactical. Like he's like trying to. It's like a chess match between the, like the Republic and him because he's so smart. And it's just it's just a great book series, but they can't do it because it takes place immediately. It's been too after. much time. Has exactly. Passed. So it's like they have, have a new story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no way they could do that one. So it's and that's fine. Yeah, but they could they can use some elements from that. I mean, obviously, it'll have to be thirty years later. So Luke will have already set up his Jedi school, which is another trilogy that takes place after that, which I've read all of them of as well. I've read yeah, every sense. one of these books. That man. makes sense. And yeah, then those totally work. I mean, and, and it's uh, Han and Leia's son and daughter, um, or Force users, and, the, and Luke trains them. And uh, I can't remember. It's one of the two is a little bit evilly, so. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, one of them's got to be bad. Of course. There's got to be somebody. to go on in the yeah. future. And there's going to be some bad guy, I'm sure. And it, it'll be great. And I'm sure they'll do a great job because I trust J.J. Abrams. It's tough to say. I know people really hated that Star Trek Into Darkness for some reason. I it's liked all right. it. It was good. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like Star Trek good. You know, like the first, the first movie? No, no, not the fucking 70s Star Trek. I'm talking about, like, the first remake. Yeah. 
that was that they just had an impact it was like holy cow this is really interesting and good and like i was not expecting that to be really good and interesting whereas like this is more like okay this is all right but I thought that, but they could have gone pretty farther. much about as good. I can't say one's better than the other. I think they're pretty much about I just, the same. I just, I just think that the original Star Trek had this impact because it like came out and was like, wow, this is actually really good. And who would have thought it's they like could do it? It's like a breath of fresh air. Exactly. Whereas the fresh air wasn't there anymore. But I still thought I really liked the second one. I don't know. Benedict Cumberbatch was good. I didn't, I, I, my problem with it uh, was I did like it still, and I think it's, it's also just as good as the first one. Yeah. They're pretty much the same. As far as quality yeah. to me, my my only problem was uh, why why bring in Khan if he's not gonna have a wrath? Yeah, that was my only problem. It was more like a space seed remake. Yeah, but it was a big problem. And the, like Khan needs that hatred. That's yeah. what makes Khan for me. Yeah, Khan is gonna be like Kirk, like you did this to me. Yeah, I almost feel like Khan should have been tacked on. Like, his second movie should have been about something else, and Khan got, like, screwed over at the end, so then in the third one, he can really be Khan. But maybe he'll Kirk, be really be Kirk's, Khan in the next one. Kirk's, like, thanking people in his, like, <laughs> Federation-like speech, where he's like, I'd like to thank all my crewmates and all this for helping me get this. And, like, Khan's, like, sitting there, he's like, oh, he's going he's gonna to thank me, because I helped him out, you know? He, like, told, he already told he all his friends him. he's going to be thanked. Yeah, he's like, he's going to thank me on air, because I helped him with that thing. And he, like, snubs him, and he's like, Kirk, <laughs> you you will feel the th- wrath of the what, what were they C- Caledonians? K- what were they? Oh God, I don't even Corinthian. Know. I don't fucking remember what. They oh were. yeah, Corinthians. That's, yeah, fucking whatever. The Corinthian blood. But they gotta they gotta bring him back though. Yeah, there's no way you can just do this one movie where like the next time they oh, bring Khan back. back, he's gonna be well, way they better, they right? Didn't kill him, kill him, so he can come back. This movie will be better visited upon, like, retrospect if they do a future movie where Khan is really badass. Like, yeah. like has that vendetta. That's, liked, what, that's what makes Khan for me is the vendetta. I like that movie. He's so I, there was fucking one, pissed in The Wrath of Khan. I love that movie. There was one moment in that movie where, where in that Star Trek movie where it was just like, it took a turn. It was when they reversed the, the Spock uh, Kirk thing and like they did the exact same thing where he went in oh, to yeah. like stop and I was like oh what you guys couldn't have thought of something that was similar but not the exact same fucking moment and it's like but, kick the cylinder yeah <laughs> what was that I mean and and part of the reason why that worked so well in Khan was fucking Spock died he did it, die he fucking died and yeah it was dumb how they retconned it immediately in the next movie but it was like at least at that point it had feeling, even though I knew he wasn't actually dead because I knew I didn't know that. I I thought that he might oh, really? be dead. Oh, I didn't. I I knew he wasn't dead, but it was like. But even then, you still feel it, like because they have a funeral, people are crying. There's that moment. Well, you know, Kirk or, or, or Spock died in in the second one, so I I, I saw that they had reversed the story, mm-hmm. and I saw. Uh, looks like he's a goner, uh, and they somehow brought him back. But I yeah. don't even know what's going on. But blood, yeah. some weird fucking retcon blood. It was, it was hastily ended. I felt. I felt like it could have been more thought out. And the the fact that there were two villains in it, apparently it was Khan and the like guy, obviously evil guy in the fucking Federation, Kirk. Because yeah. you need him for the next movie. Yeah, but. I don't know. I thought they might have actually killed him they could in that movie at the it. time. And Fuck. that was very yeah. compelling. But then it was like cheaply kind of like uh, fixed. Yeah. That was kind of disappointing. Yeah, there was like an antidote or some. It was like, I've got the antidote. You know, like, How can like, you be alive again, though? You're dead. Yeah, I don't know. Can I, we give that to old Kirk when he died from that one bridge? We, what, the bridge that fell oh, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Let's that. Let's go inject him with some of this stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Too bad they can't ever get Shatner in these movies, huh? That'd be I cool. Know. Does he just not want to? Or Oh, he wants to. Really? They won't. They won't. They, they're like. They're like no, oh. no, he wants to, but he wants to be as Kirk in a major role, he's saying. Oh, at this point, I think he would take anything. Yeah, well, that's what he said at first. But then it's like, okay, well, at this point. How is he going to be Kirk in a major role if there's already a younger Kirk that's doing everything? But, um, <laughs> no, I, I think that... Uh, Spock, what's going on? 
Uh, there's no reason why Star Trek Generations Damn should brief. be canon. That's my opinion. No, I agree. <laughs> the movie sucks. Yeah. It's not even numbered, first of all. Which one are you talking about? <laughs> Generations. Hey, that's canon. The one where Kirk dies. That's canon. It doesn't have to be. It's fucking, dude. All We all know Christopher Pine is going to die after riding a horse majestically, I might, <laughs> might add. <laughs> and um, chopping wood. And chopping wood. <laughs> that fucking movie. What a... I loved that movie when I saw it just because it meshed the two casts together and that was really cool. But it was also kind of lame when I look back at it as an adult. I guess I was a kid when I saw it. So I, I that's like the thing, man. You got that kid filter on these movies and you let a lot of the shit go right. by. And when you watch it as an adult, you're it's like, it's all really? right. It's not the worst movie. It's no insurrection. Uh, I'd actually, rather... actually, I kind of liked Insurrection. Eh. The third one's the worst one by far. Or the first one. The first oh, Star Trek movie yeah. is pretty bad. That's the worst one. At least... Oh, I don't even know. What about the fifth one? It had some good parts. Oh, it the wasn't fifth the worst. one's bad, though. Oh, I forgot about that one. It had Cybok. Ugh. No? No, Cybok. Um... <laughs> What was the seventh one? Maybe? I don't know, man. The bad ones are all bad. How, how am I supposed to say what's worse? I don't know. Like, the first one's bad, but the Enterprise looks really cool in it. So it has that going for it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first... And then the third one's bad, but it, 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 it has one... Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> Get one... out of there! The fifth one's bad. It, the fifth one's pretty I bad. I would like to mention that the third one, I believe... Um, was one of the first times I ever dabbled in podcasting. Do you remember this? Yeah. We hung out and watched it at this apartment I was living at, and then we recorded us talking about it with my friend Lee and you and me and Adam, I think, was there. Yeah. It was like a full crew. That was, that was kind of neat. I, I wish I had those. I think I put those up somewhere. There we can find them. Somewhere on the internet. If someone wants to do some digging... I could do some digging on my hard drive, maybe find a copy, just listen to us bullshitting about the wrath of, or revenge of Spock. What is it called? The return of Spock? Uh, search for Spock. Search for Spock, yes. But anyway, um, if we want to take a brief break, <laughs> get some other... I just like that Lance did a time signal and then immediately asked for a break. You didn't even give me a chance to look at yeah, the signal you're making. No, it's totally. It's perfectly fine. We 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 have commenced. We have other subjects though. Exactly. Not just Star Trek and Star Wars. Exactly. Second half, we have other things. Yes, we've finished Star Trek. We're on to and Star Wars. We're on to bigger and better. Well, you can't. I have so I have I have something else that really have to talk about. This but is about I'm your, sure you do too. Is about your absence? No, not really. Well, we can talk it's about, about something that. else. Okay. But anyway, we'll be right back. This podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Go to audibletrial.com slash littlepodcast for your 30-day free trial. All right, we're back from the break. So... Lance, how's uh, how's life? What's you had something you want to talk about? Yeah, and it, I had a couple. You know, we could talk about also my trip to Chicago. But yes, that's I, why we didn't have an episode. Yes. I can talk about more reasons why too, because everything fell apart, and I was sick for oh, a really? week. I got cold. I didn't want to be around you. What? <laughs> Come on, man. We got a little. We got like four feet between us here in the mics. You've been fine. Anyway, yeah. sorry. <laughs> We're in enclosed space. <laughs> that's true, but um. No, I, I, I uh, and and this is the last movie thing I, I swear I'm gonna bring up because we talk about movies and stuff. Yeah. First, but I just have to say, I watched the Escape Plan. Okay. With Stallone and Schwarzenegger, and and it's I, good. I thought it was great. Yeah. But the thing that really made it great, I mean, it was like solid. It's a solid movie with the uh, the plot and everything, but then. And 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 you get the you know they they're in the super prison, uh, and the warden is Jim Caviezel, right? <laughs> really? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And anyway, or person of interest. <laughs> anyway, um, 
he starts out kind of cool in the movie. He's just your average uh, warden or something. And, you know, he's kind of a dick, but uh, you don't really know what his deal is. And then as the movie goes on, Caviezel gets even more, he gets more, like, uh, more crazy. More evil? Oh, yeah. As the movie goes on. And I just want to tell you a couple of the great lines in this movie that I I have been, I've just been going in my head (laughs) since because I thought there were such great lines and such funny. But anyway, he says, um, okay, they're trying to escape. One of their guys gets wounded. And Schwarzenegger's like, we can't leave him behind. And he's like, go for, go ahead, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm too of far course, gone. The always the action movie thing. And this is a guy that they barely even know. I don't even know why they care this much. <laughs> They're in a prison. It's another prisoner. But anyway, um, uh, when this guy's like bleeding out or whatever, uh, Jim Caviezel happens upon him. <laughs> and he happens upon this man who's bleeding d- out. He does. And the guy starts praying in, in like uh, um, some type of Muslim tongue or something. Yep. And it's subtitled. But he doesn't know what he's saying. And and he looks at him and he goes, in the midst of all his praying, he's like done with a sentence or with something of praying. Yeah. And he looks at him and he goes, yeah, whatever. And shoots him in the head. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which I thought was amazing. And then, and then there's another scene right after that mm-hmm. when uh, Cavizo's having this great – uh, moment where he's he's he doesn't know where Stallone is. He's like hiding, and he's doing that great villain thing where you walk down a a plank and you start s- just talking shit out loud. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and he and he gets in the speech. That's a brilliant. I wish I had an audio of this. Okay. But he goes, he goes, and, uh, he goes. Your time is over, uh, Bresden or whatever his name is. Mm-hmm. And then he goes. <laughs> Your time is over. <laughs> like he wow. Just, he just is going full, full on. Full evil. Like, uh, what's his name in uh, that Judge Dredd movie from the 90s? Uh, Armando Sante. Armando Sante. Like, just like, ha, ha, ha. Like, right. crazy evil guy. Oh, and it, it continues on. Yeah. It, it, it's a part where... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, There's a great part where um, uh, he's by all these tanks and Stallone shoots him. Like, they're going to explode, but they don't explode. Oh, exploding tanks? You're right. You know, classic exploding tanks that are everywhere. And they don't explode. And he just looks back, and he looks at him, and he's like, hmm. He does, like, this what? weird. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, like, hmm. <laughs> and, and Stallone, like, shoots one more time, and he's like, like, got him, or something. Shoots him, and he blows up, which was really funny. Mm-hmm. But but Caviezel really ties, ties, he pulls the whole movie together. He does. I, I, without him. Inspired. Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 49. <laughs> oh, so close. I'd love to see Caviezel uh, be a villain in some more stuff, though, yeah. after watching this. He was the he was what stood still low. Or is he was, British? Does he have a British accent? No, I think sure he's oh, from the U.S. surprising. We but, go with a British villain for that. Um... And Schwarzenegger's really great too. He has a he has a part where he you know he's a great villain, Alan Rickman. <laughs> Why has he not been villains in movies? Well, Sorry, he, he has been. not lately. All his best roles are exactly. <laughs> but um, he has uh, Mr. Potter. Schwarzenegger pulls out out of nowhere. Yep. Uh, he has like a couple weird sex jokes in that movie. <laughs> what? Yeah. And and. And he's a part. He has a part where he has to like antagonize a prison guard or something, so he can get thrown in the hole. And so he goes, like, "Listen, I knew your mother, and let me tell you something. She could really." And he gets his hands going like he's throttling a dick. What? And he goes, "She could really polish a helmet." <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. You know who else could really polish a helmet? His old, like, housekeeper. Am I right? <laughs> polish a helmet. Oh, Jesus. I love that phrase. Polish That's amazing. a helmet. <laughs> and then there's another part. Is this movie PG-13? No, it's R. What the fuck? There's another really funny part. Okay. Where, uh... He, was uh, this movie written in the 80s? And then, <laughs> should they, have like, been, yeah. and then they like fucking it kept getting it. pushed back and yeah, yeah, yeah. a different cast. We yeah. got this great script, but you know, nobody's ready and now they're ready for it. <laughs> yeah. And they had a they had a scene where um he goes he needs a, a an audience with the warden to do something with the plot. I don't know what. And he's like he's just like occupy his time. I don't know what he's supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he's like, I have the map. Uh or I can I can draw a map. 
to the guy that you you've been wanting to locate like i have the information type of thing yep and he's like He's like counting to ten. He's like, "You have ten seconds, Kavisel." He, and he starts counting down. He's like, nine, eight. Like he's just getting annoyed as mm-hmm. Schwarzenegger's writing out this map. Mm-hmm. And uh, but he's like, he's 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 playing along. He's like, okay, well, if he's gonna actually give me the location, which I really need, uh, give him paper, give him a pencil. He's drawing this thing, and he's like, and and you know, I'm not the best artist, but here you go. And he gives him the paper, and it's a picture of. A person's ass with a, a, an arrow pointing right into the ass. <laughs> Some great moments in this movie. I huh? know, right? I mean, I, I'm sorry you spoiled all the best ones, but you really have to go whack them. Yeah, I, but seeing that live <laughs> seems like it would be worth it. I feel like the polish the helmet part is a little better. Oh, my God. <laughs> just the look of glee on his face. It's yeah. just like throttling this imaginary penis. and It's funny. It's... <laughs> Yeah, totally. You wouldn't see that coming. <laughs> That's crazy. And also, Fifty Cents in the movie. Nice. <laughs> and, and Curtis, Curtis, what's his name? Curtis something. Something. Um, oh, fuck. Jackson. Yeah, I think it's Curtis Jackson. Yeah, he has a. Here's the thing about Curtis Jackson's acting that that it's amazing. That's it's, amazing. It's transcendent. Here's what's great about him: you watch him act, and you never know what what emotion he's supposed to be conveying nice. that's what's great about him you're like oh so he's the elizabeth brinkley in showgirls <laughs> school of acting yeah like, is he being snarky or is he angry i don't know you don't know <laughs> you never you know you just never know what's going on in he that just line. kind of smiles and just kind of like yeah yeah <laughs> he gets through it <laughs> oh my god they gotta get him in some of those fast and furious movies yeah, yep. I don't see what. No, they have who? What's his name? Ludacris is already in there, so they already got their black rapper in that. Oh, okay. You know, I guess. I don't, I don't know. know. Fifty I guess Cent I don't might be cheaper though. <laughs> yeah, as far as acting, than Ludacris. If we were booking a concert, no question, Fifty Cent would cost more. Oh yeah. But when we're talking about acting, Fifty Cent's quota drops amazingly. <laughs> He's like, you know what? I've taken a bullet before. I can act. <laughs> what is it with this guy? He. He he has uh uh fifty cent. Yeah. I feel as though half dollar his career as I like to call him. Yeah. His career in in every way except acting is in such a great place. Oh I know. And he actually takes time away from the things that make him money yeah, to just, do these awful movies. Yeah, I know. It's everyone's got the dream though that they want to be in an action movie, you know? Like you talked about this. So there's that okay. So people probably won't know this because this is going to continue to be blown under the sand as we move to a new console generation. But the video game, which I have, that you might we might have to play sometimes so you can see it. Blood on the sand. Fifty cent blood on the I sand. Haven't played it yet? It's but fucking epic. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Um, it's like Gears of War, but like with fifty cent. <laughs> and the plot of the game is you go to do like a gig as fifty cent in like Iraq. And like they don't pay you, okay. And they like have want to pay you, and that you they're gonna pay you in this like golden skull, like rubies and shit. <laughs> and then like some guy steals it, and you're like basically murdering everyone in all of Iraq <laughs> to get your skull. <laughs> it's oh, amazing. The sand is in in, in Iraq. Yeah, dude. Blood I on always the sand. assumed it was just in California. Oh, fuck no, like dude. a GTA. No, he's taking out terrorists. <laughs> it's awesome. And like they talk about like that game like. Inception, like the way it was built, like the way it came out, was like Fifty Cent was like, I want to, I want to get in an action movie. I won't be, you know, I want to be shooting guns. You know, I want it to look badass. You know, and it's like, oh my god, it's like <laughs> this is a- how every game should be developed. Oh, I agree <laughs> wholeheartedly. The game's amazing, and you can pl- you can play. I think you can play it co-op online with another person. Um, you can't play it together though. Um, on on one it's TV, too much to handle. Apparently, it's too, too much, much to handle. Blood on the sand. But you can watch it, and, and it's just incredible because like there's like a button that needs to be in every game. But I think if you just hit up, it's like taunt, and you yell shit as like Fifty Cent, and you're like, get the fuck over here. You know, you, it's swearing too. It's like you motherfuckers. It's awesome. It's like the swear button That's in the awesome. game. I know it's a it's a hilariously fun game, and it's so dumb and stupid. And, like, a complete ripoff of Gears of War, basically. It's, like, the same mechanics and everything. Right. But, like, yeah, you're 50 Cent. You swear. And you shoot terrorists. <laughs> and it's awesome. 
Yeah, so 50 Cent, video game star, movie star, Rap rapper. Star. He's, he's every triple threat. Uh, they call that the triple threat. Vitamin water conglomerate. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't even know. He owns all that shit. Or did at one point. I don't know. Yeah, he, he sold the share. He actually didn't own it, though. Like, people were like, oh, it's owned by 50 Cent. And it's like, no, he just had a lot of shares in it. So he was like it one might, of those popular know, shareholders, you know? He made a lot of scratch off of exactly. it. Exactly. He made a lot of money off that vitamin water, which is smart, of course. It's not like those guys in sports that, like, blow all their money immediately. And it's <laughs> like, oh, no. He's like, he got a business plan. He's like, I need to invest, make a ton of money, build the 50 Cent brand and there's all those other games too there's a there's a couple other 50 cent games too but the blonde in the sand one is is awesome and we we we, we uh nobody had philip seymour hoffman is that what you want to bring up the, the well, psh I mean, we we missed it it was a week ago uh, uh any That's thoughts true. i mean i, I don't really have to go into this too much the but. odds were not in his favor to <laughs> quote the hunger games Oh, really? <laughs> no, yeah, they always say, may the odds be in your favor, and they were not in his favor. Yeah, he um, overdosed on heroin, and um, this was well, one of the most surprising deaths because it was – he surprised us twice. Once last year when he said he was going to rehab for heroin addiction. Right. And I was like, okay, what? <laughs> that was happening, I guess. And then the second one was that he died of a heroin overdose again when everyone supposedly thought he was clean. Right, and he was still acting – he was filming the Hunger Games sequels, you know, basically. And maybe there was a break, but he, he was in the process of filming it still. And it's it was crazy. Like, it's like uh, you expect when someone dies of heroin <laughs> to, to be like that guy from Alice in Chains. Yeah. Where he just hid away for yeah, 10 years. Yeah, be at the years. bottom of their career, you right. know. But this guy was still acting. <coughs> well, this was a trendy was... heroin habit he had, you know. Yeah. How, how does the world rob us of Philip Seymour Hoffman yet spares us? Artie Lang. <laughs> no offense to Artie Lang. He's a great guy, and I'm sure he's you know, a great guy. And he's he's funny. come downhill, though, as far as comedy. I've, I've been following him on Twitter. Yeah. And a lot of his tweets are, like, so offensive. <laughs> and even more so. Even like, more than the Iron Cheek? I thought he had done away with – I don't know why I thought this. Okay. But I thought he had done away with wishing AIDS upon people. But no, he's still doing that. <laughs> It's a yeah, that's a, t- that's a type of humor I, I can't get behind. It's like just blatantly. Usually, I think he's better than that. But maybe on Twitter he's not Twitter's better difficult. than that. Twitter, <laughs> Twitter's difficult to be funny on because you have 140 characters and you there's no – you can't – like, you know, when you're like a comedian, you're making jokes and stuff. Like, you got the audience there. You can feed off the energy, you know, like wink and nod and do a little – hand gesture and stuff twitter it's just a fucking line right it's like you better have a good line written you know or else everyone's gonna not like it so he's probably just going for the shock value which is an easy way and you know Artie's career is in a weird place because where do you where do you go from here if you're him you you were uh, you were into on an early grave <laughs> from a heroin addiction <laughs> hopefully not well, but um philip seymour did uh the hofster the real one but in no like, and and you know people always get second chances and stuff, and I get that. And he's still and got third a, chances he's still got and a, fourth chances. Yeah, and he's still got a profile that you know people know him and and things like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. But he, the peak happened. Yeah, we hit peak Artie Lang. It was, and you know what? We thought the peak was in the '90s when he was on Mad TV. He got fired. Of course. He was saved by the Howard Stern show. Yep. He was on that for like eight or nine years. That was the real peak. Yeah, I mean, for sure. That was when he made the most money, and he was the, at his peak of, of of booking. He would do a lot of stand up shows and make a killing. Yeah, because people knew him from Howard Stern, and and he did a decent enough job with the stand up. So it was like, all right. But then when that ended, um, <coughs> and sorry, I, I'm still coughing. I hate I, to say it, but the, the, cold sh- the is show still here. the show is better than ever without him. Oh wow! It it, it is better. Like. Because he started to drag the show down mm-hmm. with his addictions and stuff. Yeah. And his – though he did have some great moments on the way out. Because yeah. he started fights with everybody in the studio because he, you know, he yeah. was an addict. So he, he he even got into a fight with Stern in an episode, which which almost – his own people. like Yeah. yeah. But it was like – he he was going off on everyone, you know what I mean? He was he was burning every bridge on his way out, and that was kind of like entertaining, I guess. Oh yeah. But um, 
You, you, she that, just basically crossed the bridge, lit the match, and threw it behind him. It goes both ways, though, because there were episodes where he just sat there like a slob and and was, like, annoying. Yeah. So that also happened. Like, so yeah. sometimes it was not great. But the show is better than ever without him. Uh, the show is right now, I think, is amazing. Uh, but, yeah, what do you Which do is if- incredible, though, when you think about the Stern show. I mean, that's been on since when? Like, the 90s? Right. Like, the mid-90s? No, it's been on since... He's been doing that show since the early 80s. That's true. With Robin and Fred. So that's that's, that's the Howard Stern show, I would say. So okay. That's, that's, I'd say early 80s. Um, I'm, I mean, I've never really listened to it a lot, so I don't know a lot about it. But, but I've gone back and listened to... Uh, I just picked a year. I picked, like, 2003, right? Like, yep. in the in the... The weeks when I've caught up and I have nothing else to listen to and I feel like I need some more Stern, I've yeah, been yeah. listening to 2003. And i got to say, it's not even close to as good. Hmm. Not even close. Uh, I feel like people have that, like, because a lot of people criticize, uh, they say, oh, it was better when Artie was on it or it was better when Jackie, the joke man, was on it. And it's just not true. It's yeah. not as good. It wasn't as it's as good as it is now as ever. I mean, come on. Yeah. And uh, you you and I watched that movie Private Parts a couple weeks ago. Right. I don't know if we talked about it on podcast, but man, that movie's really good. Like it's great. Oh, you yeah. know, it's funny. It tells kind of his story. Um he's in it, he acts in it, and he's not awful. And I don't know, it was just interesting. It was just really cuz I never really knew the story of how he kind of came up and Good for him, you know. He yeah. did his own thing, and he and he does a, a lot of stuff that I agree with. That it's it's people want truth, people and, want real. You know what I mean? And, uh, like he's not afraid to talk about real things on air. You know, it's not. Let's just be you know uh, safe for the advertisers and the music and the listeners and the FCC. It's like let's do what people want, and guess what? People fucking flock to it. You know right. what I mean? Like it's because it's real. This is real crazy and the, shit. And the, and the thing, the thing that that's even more unbelievable is even after this movie came out about his career and everything, yeah, he just continued to get better, and the show kept getting better. Yeah, that's the thing that's unreal. It yeah. kept evolving, like the of course. Show. But and I should probably mention since we're on the topic, the Howard Stern birthday party show, which yep. was a big. Uh, I don't know if you read about this. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, we had every late night show host was on that. Okay. It had Fallon. Kimmel is hosting. Yep. Seth Green was there. Okay. He's the next guy coming in for, for Fallon. Seth Slot. Myers. Or Seth Myers. Jesus. Not Seth Green. There's a difference there. Seth Green, no one cares. Seth Myers. Hey, <laughs> yeah. come on. Except unless it's Robot Chicken. Oh, yeah. That's a great show. <laughs> but, um, and, and Letterman. Not dads. Letterman was on also. Yeah. So it was everyone but Jay Leno, basically. Wow. Aw. Who he still has a feud with. But, really? Um, they get a feud? Yeah, and I think it's kind of ridiculous, but because it's all over. Because Leno hired Stuttering John without asking him. Uh, but I think Stuttering John has so little talent that he should have never cared. <laughs> so we can talk about Jay Leno's retirement that just. There happened. you go. Yeah, Letter- or, uh, L- Leno. What you, Leno, what, what's your thought? Well, yeah, Letterman will never retire. He will fucking ride that desk. CBS is no hurry to replace him. No, and they never have been. Well, they, he's always lost to Leno, but he's always been close. So they're like, whatever. <laughs> right. Who cares? Um, what are your thoughts on Jay Leno? Where do you stand? Personally, I mean, I haven't watched him in years. I, I totally have no interest in watching yeah. his show or even Letterman's or anybody's late night show. Yeah. If I, I really, I really don't watch late night shows anymore. No. But when I did watch them, yeah. I preferred Leno. Same here. I watched a ton when, of Leno. I'm talking like when I grew up to about 2004. Same here. That's when, when, I, I, when I watched I, late night yeah, shows. Yeah, basically from... When I grew up, up until, like, I graduated high school. And then, because I would watch every night. This was my routine. I would go to bed. Because parents would be like, get to bed. It's, like, fucking 10, 30, 11. I would go to bed, go into my room, turn on, watch Leno, watch Conan, and either fall asleep watching Conan or put on some That Simps- was the thing. Or put on some Simpsons episodes. You, you had to watch Conan's I monologue because he was always great. I absolutely loved Conan. Because you would always, this is the way Conan was. It was, it was like, I'd watch Leno just because I would... Be winding down, not paying attention. Leno's funny. I mean, I know people fucking hate Jay Leno for some reason, but he's not writing all those jokes. He's got a talented staff of writers, you know, and and John has, Melendez, and he's got some, <laughs> <laughs> and he's got and he's got some good bits, you know what I mean? And he's got you know headlines are funny. He's a real personable guy. Great interviewer. 
you know? Right. Like, got a lot of funny stuff out of people. And then you watch Conan, and Conan's monologue always kills it, and he always And then he comes comes back from the first break, and he does a sketch. Yes, and the sketches are awesome every time. And, and then the, when the guests came on, that's when I usually tuned out. Exactly. And I would switch it over to The Simpsons, watch and that I think, fall asleep. I think Conan kind of tuned out during some of those guests, too. Not always, but He's sometimes. He's a decent interviewer sometimes. But um, when he had the animals I think on, every late night host has an autopilot that comes kicks in sometimes. at some point. It depends. It's like a self-preservation tactic. Yeah. Because if you don't mm-hmm. have that, mm-hmm. you just don't know what they're talking when, about when you, at all. When you, when you get to hear who's on Conan, you'd like scan. It's like, okay. Is he going to have a lot of fun with this guy? Like, is this going to be a good guest? If not, tune out. If yes, like oftentimes you'd have... Hey, I mean, I would tune out if if Denise Richards was my next guest. I understand. Oh, yeah. What what are you going to talk about? (laughs) How's your next project, Denise? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Starship Troopers was a while ago. and That's all I know about Denise Richards. (laughs) Right. That and that she was Charlie 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 Sheen, Sheen, right? They were married. Yeah. Hey, somebody was married to Charlie Sheen. Right? She Someone deserved, thought that was a good decision. <laughs> she deserves a medal or something. They have a kid together, don't they? <laughs> don't they? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, fucking Jesus Christ, Charlie Sheen. Uh, but he lives the life now. Just hiring porn stars to have sex how, with him. How, 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 how did you think that was going to work, though? I don't know. Seeing him the way he is now? Yeah. There had to have been some of that there. Did he get worse, or was he always this way? I bet he got worse, but I, I'm sure there was something there. Did you hear about his tweets to Ashton Kutcher? No. Oh, he just went off on him this week Jeez. again. Why? He said, uh... uh a drive-by on like, a Kutcher. Like, I love all his tweets, too, because they all are in this weird fractured, like, sentence type it's of structure. clearly he's not fully... He's, you know, he's like a V6 that's running on five cylinders. Yes. One of the cylinders has stopped working. If that. Yeah. And and he's like, he's... Maybe four. Listen, bro. Because he's like direct tweeting at Ashton. It's really God. embarrassing. I love it when celebs do that too. That like obviously don't hang out with each other. And they just like tweet directly to each other. And like, so they're just assuming people are going to pick advice, up on it. Here's some advice, sir. And it's like, dude, what? And he's like, listen, bro. Uh... Why don't you uh, go find your own thing and stop ruining my sh- brilliant show? Was like one of his. What? <laughs> yeah. The show that, I mean, he. Wait, wait, Ashley him... Kutcher's on Anger Management? No. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh. I'm talking about who two and a half men. So he's like, like, he's like, I left you the reins to the number one comedy ship and you just sort of run it into the ground. And it's like, <laughs> right. hmm, Charlie, I don't know about this. And then, and then, so, so. So Kutcher's response, though, I don't know if it's directly to him or to another source, but he says uh, more along the lines of, uh, look, man, I'm sick of this bullshit. Uh, it's been three, three and a half years. Like, fucking get over it. And his response was, that's cool, bro. I was I was in a bad place. I always says, bro, like, constantly now. I don't know what's... <laughs> He didn't used to say bro all the time when he was bro age. Bro But now he's beyond bro age and he's all broing. Anyway, but he goes... Um, it's just bad. He no said, bro. He says, look, bro, uh, uh, I get what you're saying. And uh, and we can totally move past that. But if you come at me... This is where he gets things so close. Oh, my again. God. But if you come at me hard or some line like this you come at the best the you better not comes. miss he says he says i'll put you on a hospital food diet for a month he says what yeah <laughs> i'm paraphrasing but i'm pretty close on most of this i'm gonna you say this these, though these quotes up let's say this charlie sheen aston kutcher we're talking bare knuckle <laughs> fight let's say let's say we take a pool and drain a pool and they both go in that fucking basin bare knuckled who's winning kutcher Hundred times, hundred times out of ten. Me? I mean, Charlie Sheen, you're a he broken man. He hits him man. once in the ribs, and he's just gonna be coughing up a blood. Lung. Like he's just, he uh, smokes uh, too much. Uh, uh, he's not in shape. Oh my god! Look at him. He's missing teeth already. He like looks his, ten years older than he is he's already. High on drugs. Like Martin Sheen looks younger than Charlie that Sheen. Is, <laughs> that is not true, <laughs> but sadly closer to truth than it should be. In five years, it might be. Yeah, true. that's true. Oh my god, dude! Oh <laughs> my god! You know what's crazy? So just one, just a step back to the Philip Seymour Hoffman deal. Like when, like celebrities like him, like die through like a drug overdose like that. Like people are like, I made some jokes. 
And nobody called me out on this. But you made jokes I, about Philip Seymour Hoffman's uh, death? Yeah. What, what kind of jokes? You got them? Well, I said when I found out about his death <laughs> that I was going to be in seclusion in the West Wing, <laughs> which is a line from the uh, Big Lebowski. Oh, yeah, okay. So he, he, he I thought said, you were talking about the West Wing. And I'm no, like, no, no. was he on the West Wing? <laughs> well, he says, uh, maybe that's the West Wing, but it's, it's one of the wings. But yeah, uh, the dude comes in and he's like, Mr. Lebowski is in seclusion in the West Wing. You know, he's like grieving. Well, like that's that. fine. Exactly. No, but I think, honestly, when, when someone does that, they deserve their fucking hate, dude. Like, you fucking, you kill yourself by, like, fucking overdosing? Fuck you. Like, Jesus Christ. Well, that I just bullshit. That I didn't have as much of a. Pro- I mean, yeah, it is. He needs this. When he had uh, three kids and a, and a, uh, I mean, uh, a live-in that's type fucking... of situation he's leaving behind. But uh, that's fucking selfish and, and awful. I mean, I know you have, but a it's problem. addiction also. And he went to rehab and it didn't work. And obviously, I mean, you want. I mean, addiction what, is. What tough. I more raised an eyebrow on is is this fifty bags of heroin thing going. Yeah, on. he had a, an enormous amount saying, of heroin what's in his doing home. Doing this. Amount mm-hmm. of cat or, is he giving this to people? Is, is he, he a distributor that's, to yeah. these to the Hollywood stars? Look, look, you don't you never know. And oh and I was saying you don't know how this guy's finances are. Mm-hmm. Uh, people might be like, oh oh, he's a millionaire, and it's like, look, people make people people. You ever watch behind the music? When you're on heroin, you burn through money. Yeah, you lose it. Yep. You make t- and 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 just because someone's an actor with millions of dollars doesn't mean they don't make bad investments. Oh yeah, investments is what gets people you know bankrupt quick you, faster. You know than how anything. quick you can lose a million? It's pretty fast. Right. Brewster's millions, notwithstanding, <laughs> that was an elaborate, hilarious scheme to lose all those millions. It was, but uh, it was quite good. Oh, that movie oh, is Richard awesome. Pryor. I know, John right? Candy. I'm just thinking about Richard Pryor right now. God rest his soul. I, I know he's not dead yet. But he's Who? dead. Isn't Richard Pryor not dead yet? Oh, he's he, dead. He did die, die. He died. Well, he was dead before he was dead, though. Yeah, he was in rough shape. Oh, God. Poor guy. And Candy's dead. Oh. Why all the good ones die so young? Like, answer, answer me this. Why? Well, they were, well, young. Is Richard Kirk, Pryor was 60. Kirk Douglas still alive. <laughs> Probably because he, I mean... He took care of himself. I mean, yeah. I mean, you look at him in Spartacus. That man, that man, at least at one point in his life, was in I cannot peak physical condition. I see him in Spartacus without thinking of that line in Sopranos with uh, uh, Pantleano where he's like, they did not have fucking flat tops in ancient Greece. <laughs> That's true. Just because he's like so high on Gladiator. And it's even funnier when you take into account that he thinks Gladiator is some type of historical context. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> but it's just funny. It's just yeah. stupid uh gangster guy you know mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so that's that's that oh so you went to chicago you said yeah so you went to Sh- shy city shy town as yep. i like to call it why all the way down so did you go to chicago proper or is this a suburb uh, both i i took a bus uh to greyhound yeah or not a greyhound it was uh another company but there was a bus <laughs> okay. that the distinction needed to be made i'm just saying i like, don't think there's greyhounds in, in madison all right. i call them kleenex all charter right. bus not say bathroom tissues all and right. it was uh uh 32 dollars to go to from here to chicago round trip or just one way in one way okay you can buy a ticket online but it's first come for serve Okay. So no one buys a ticket online of except course. people who want to make more work for themselves by printing things out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you might as well. It's first come for serve. You might as well just. It's pay not cheaper cash. online either. It's like what the what's the point? You know. And I also found out that like almost every bus driver is really surly. Of course, they're all hard asses. Yeah, Did we you had like, like three of them on the way down and up, and they are all. How long was the bus ride? Here's the thing that I thought was f- not funny. It, 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 it was it was annoying. But he, 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 this guy, this guy on the way down, made the distinction. Every stop we made, uh, Rockford, Deloitte, whatever. Yeah. He said, "Hey, we're stopping at this place to pick up some people. If it's not long enough to do anything, so don't get out." I'm sure he's had people we'll like off. fucking walk out and then not get back. He's right. like, Get the fuck Their on the bus. On the bus, they're gone. Yeah. Who knows? Then he stops at a place. Okay. Has no announcement. Uh-huh. So is it, are we allowed to get out now? I have no idea. He set a precedent. 
I look outside. He's smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? This is a double standard. <laughs> but then I don't know how far into the cigarette he is. So I'm like, can I go out and get myself a drink? Can I? I yeah. just sat in the bus. Yeah. <laughs> We took a bus down, huh? Also, I uh, ended up at an airport terminal. That's where the bus stopped. Yep. In, in and I, At O'Hare, yep. No, I went to Midway. But um, Wow. I went... Um, well, it's closer to downtown. I went to ask somebody, because I was being picked up, and I went to ask uh, one of the... There was two guards coming down with their <laughs> colored yep. sashes or whatever. And I went to ask them, uh, if like, what is the... What is this area that I'm in right now? Yeah. There's signs everywhere. I don't know what's going on. Like, what's the title of this place so I could say, come get me at this yeah. place? Yeah. They both had, like, special needs. It was weird. Really? <laughs> like, I was I was like, what? And then the other one started talking. And it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> you couldn't understand. No. Oh, no. And so you're stranded. I found out. I mean, but like, it was weird. It was like. Why are they together? Like, shouldn't we pair them off with somebody else? Okay, now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, they're, they're full people. I mean, you know, obviously you had a hard time, and maybe that's a bad thing. I wasn't angry. I was confused. You're just I was like, just. I, there's, I, mean, I just needed. The, uh, you needed some information that they were unable to give to you. Two people. Two people. Yeah, you should have at least one person there. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. And, and so, how was the big city? Oh, yeah, it's amazing to look at. Um, so, now, quit. This is the first time you've really been. Yeah, I haven't been to Chicago or you've Big never, City. Or you've never really I've been, been to, to Milwaukee. Mm, <laughs> it's in Chicago so much bigger. I mean, Chicago is enormous comparatively. I mean, how many is like, like yeah, the population's twenty million or something there, right? Yeah, I don't think it's that big. Not that big. Maybe the greater Chicago area, but I think maybe Chicago, like fifteen then. Or I think it would be like five, but. Only five? Yeah. But, like, for instance, Milwaukee is, like, 800,000. So. <laughs> really? I thought it was 2 million. No. The the Milwaukee area is 2 million. Okay, I'm thinking like, the area. If you count, like, Racine and all those, like, adjacent cities, then yeah. But, yeah, otherwise, Milwaukee proper. I think Milwaukee County is 2 million. But. And there's nothing better than going through downtown Chicago on a bus. Yeah. Where, like, I'm new to the city. I don't – I'm not bored by anything. You got the music. You got – Fucking uh, Chicago playing like, da, 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 na, na, na. <laughs> fucking twenty five or sixty four going on. It's like uh, uh, just being stuck in traffic in downtown Chicago is exciting to me. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I I'm mean, like you're looking just at giant things, buildings. I'm seeing this person rush across the street with coffee in their hands. I'm like, this is the real city. It's a big market deal this going is down where here. Happen. That coffee needs to get to someone. <laughs> yeah, dude, it totally like, is. In station, it's huge looking. Yeah, totally. Uh, I love big cities. I mean, I love Chicago. Um, I really wish that they would have built the rail line to Chicago um, from Madison because well, that's why you get this bus. It would you get be, on the bus. It would be making it way wor- less worse than riding a bus uh, because you. I think, How is it worse? It's the same thing. I actually think the bus probably would be better because no. Uh, this okay, a rail line direct. Of course, of course, it's not better, but. It's pretty good deal. You, you, if if you want to go to Chicago, thirty two dollars isn't bad. It's not a bad deal. You just cheaper than gas, probably for me. At it least. is for it, me. It, at least. it would be for me too. Yeah, and the risk of my car breaking down. Yeah, that's true. Which is yeah. <laughs> well, and public transport in Chicago is really good too. Tolls you got to pay. That's true. Although the tolls aren't too bad. Well, no, I think yeah. there's something like ten dollars each way. You're right. No, I'm thinking about driving to Adams Place, where I only have to pay one toll. To Adams Place, just a couple bucks. It's a dollar, I think, a dollar or ninety cents or something like that. Was he like DeKalb or something? Yeah, he's no, 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 way further south, like oh. like uh, normal Bloomington. Okay, so like central, south central, maybe not south, just central. North central, I don't know. Okay, it's like if you go like t- say how far Chicago is down. And you go all the way out into the middle of Illinois, so it's like a three or four hour drive to get to Adams. It's not too bad. It was it was me and a bunch of elderly people on the way down. Really? Yeah, I think there was a casino or something that uh, they were going to. I'm not for sure. Could be for anything. Potawa to me. Day joke gaming Madison. Though I did see, and I didn't want to be that guy because yeah. I. Well, first of all, I can't be that guy because I don't have a phone that can take pictures or anything. Okay. 
But I did think it was kind of cheesy. This like guy like like taking photos from the bus seat. Oh of really? The city. And he's like trying to get these angles and stuff. Wait, what? I know. Isn't that weird? That is. I've done it as a tourist in like real cities, but like Chicago, like on a fucking Greyhound bus. Like when I've done like Don't you just when I've done bus shots. Lance, there's no way you're gonna get a good shot no, from and a you moving don't. bus. You always take one bus shot, and then you are like, oh, shit, this, these look terrible. Why right. would I waste my – This guy was and going the... on fire. He had uh, a whole roll going. Jesus. Oh, Every man. time I looked over. <laughs> and he's trying to get, like, the tops of the buildings, but it's hard because yeah. you can't really get – because the bus is – Did you do the Sears Tower? I saw it from the distance. But you didn't You didn't go up it? No. Oh, that's fucking that. insanity, dude. The first time you get up there, you're just like, holy fuck. I didn't get really get a chance to really walk around too much downtown. No, because you spent time with the lady. Yeah, but you don't get too much time. It's a fucking $32 booty call, Lance. <laughs> 64 Oh, yeah, that's true. Round trip. You don't get too much time, though, to walk around um, downtown because you're kind of told, like, look, fucking rush hour is coming. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to be here when that happens. Yeah, we need to go. <laughs> and it was freezing balls. The whole oh, time yeah, of was course. There. It's the winter of our discontent right now. That's right. It is fucking zero degrees out every day. <laughs> it is horrible how cold it is. I know we haven't ever talked about it on the podcast, but I, everyone knows. Most of the country knows how terrible this winter has been. <laughs> Unless you're in, like, southern Florida and you're like, oh, yeah, it's like 80. This is great. Anyway, no, so sh- Chicago, first time in a big city. That's, that's crazy. I'm trying to think. I think Chicago is the very first big city I ever went to. Um, yeah, it blew my mind when I was a kid, you know, going to like the, the... skyline's amazing. Oh, yeah, I mean, on the lake? Yeah. Like, it's it's great. a sight. Yeah, it's, it's a sight to be seen. And it's a, it's a great city, too. I really do like Chicago a lot. I've been there quite a few times, and uh, it's just kind of cool. It I don't feels want, like when you come in... Not to say in, you're like a country bumpkin or anything. Right. Because you are cultured, obviously. You Somewhat. watch Japanese movies and some. You just never have had a reason to visit right. a big city like Chicago, you know? And you go in, and uh, you look at a couple blocks, and, and... Did you get a Chicago hot dog? <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> but I was thinking... Okay. I saw a couple city blocks, Ditka. and I was thinking, you know, uh, where I grew up... Yep. There's probably more population in those blocks than there is in the whole city. I grew oh, up for in, sure. You know, with a city of two thousand, it's not hard. Right. They're like one big apartment building. Yeah. And you're there. <laughs> like holy cow! It's almost yeah. It's it, mind blowing when it, you think about it. And and it's like it, it's like okay. Don't you get the like vibe? I don't know. When you're in like a city like Chicago. Yeah. You get this vibe like this is where it's happening like. Oh yeah, the deals are being made. Here. I know, right? <laughs> well, like the last time, like uh, people people work their lives to get into the city. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, to get here to do things, yeah. to 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 go higher in their careers. This is the or pinnacle whatever. right here for a lot of things. It is. This is the hot deal. And um, the last time I was in Chicago was in maybe two thousand. Also, nine bus coming in. First billboard I see. Yeah, Mike Ditka. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Ditka. So, however, he was he was sporting New York Jewelers. Oh, so I don't know how that goes down mm. with the Chicago mm. Jewelers. Mm. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I think the last time was in like 2009, 2010. No, it was 2009. Um, was when I was in Chicago, and that was when I was working. Uh, I was I was there on business, um, and I stayed in a gorgeous hotel like downtown, like the Hilton. Like, this is all fucking expenses paid, too, because it's business. Nice. I know. It was great. And like, Hilton's are nice. And I didn't even have to, like, pay for I know, dude. The fucking, this place, flat screen TV, memory foam mattress, Ooh. fucking, du- it was a queen because, you know, it's business. So there's certain expectations when you're on a business trip <laughs> that the company you're visiting pays for your hotel and gets you a nice hotel. And I worked with the healthcare industry, so they're not poor. And, um... It was awesome. And, like, I didn't have to deal with traffic because I just literally drove my car to the hotel, parked it in the hotel thing. Valet, of course, tipped him, like, I think 10 or something, whatever. Reimbursed, of course, Mm -hmm. because it's business. You just expense everything. And um, food's all paid for because you expense everything. I would feel weird about giving a valet in my car, but only because of the way it handles. (laughs) 
<laughs> you're like, there's a couple rules about my car. This no, Lance, but don't turn too far to the left, or else it's gonna start making a clicking sound. Yeah, this is so. This is the incredible thing about business travel, is that like, I from Verona, in 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 Wisconsin near Madison, I took. The entire trip was free. I went to a rental car place. I got a rental car because I'm not driving my own car down there because that's like insurance or whatever for the company. I can only ride a a company like purchased rental car. So I drive a rental car down to Chicago. It's too close to fly. I flew to Minneapolis for work once from Madison. Mm -hmm. Fucking crazy because of just the way that it works. So the distance is too far. So anyway, um, I drive to Chicago, Dodge Caliber, decent car, new, whatever. I was able to fit in it. I was very worried because of my length of my legs. Some cars, uh, I can't fit my legs underneath the steering wheel. Dodge Caliber, if you're six foot five, <laughs> you're able to drive. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I fucking take this ex- car. I basically am paying for gas, which is also expensed. Like, everything's expensed, you know. I drive all the way down there. Pull into the hotel thing, give the guy my thing, all that, go in, I'm eating, I got a daily stipend for food, so I'm just like using that for food, and then I have to go to the, the hospital that's across town for work, I go down, and they're like, you get a cab, you pay for a cab, well, they'll expense it, the h- hospital pays for the cab, so I like fucking wave a cab down or I don't even have to wave a cab down this is I feel like a fucking this was like when I felt like I was on top of the world here (laughs) because I'm like one of those business people and I just walk out to the desk and they're like give me a cab and they hail you a cab you walk out get in the cab give them the money give them the tip again all being paid for by the company nice and I get in do my work get out get the tip go back to the on the cab go back to the thing um, I walk around a little bit downtown before I go to bed. I'm working like 12 hour shift here in the hospital, you know, doing some software installation and like, yeah. And I walk around downtown Chicago, you know, nice. and I'm just like going to like a couple places, get some food. I stopped at like a seven 11 and got some gummy bears and like fucking thing. And it's just weird. Like walking around those big buildings, you know, right. Like, like so being from mammoth. Madison, there's not a lot of tall, tall buildings. And then we're there. It's like a concrete jungle in there, man. Right. But anyway, that was awesome. Like, and it was just incredible. Just this experience of visiting the city, having to work fucking 12 hours in a hospital, okay, is not a vacation. Right. But not having to pay for any of it, you know, just going to the hotel. And I would, like, literally go in the hotel, sleep for fucking, like, eight hours, wake up, and then go to the fucking shift. <laughs> like, it was not – there was not a lot of extra free time to hang out, but – that was fucking awesome. And oh, if you ever get a chance to work in a company that you get to do business travel, maybe it would suck if you did it all the time. Right. But like two or three times a year, being able to visit a place and not pay for anything and just have everything taken care of is really nice. Right. And like, yeah, that was just, it blew my mind. I didn't have to pay for shit. Because it's, it's ideal almost because um, mm-hmm. if you haven't traveled a lot because yep. – uh, you like to still get your work done and still be clocking in. Yep, getting paid. But what you don't like is having to have everything with your finances stop, come to a <laughs> dead halt yeah, while basically. you go have a vacation. Yep. And waste more money. Yep. That's so. If I could go work somewhere, yeah, obviously it would be it would be it'd be awesome. Yeah. Maybe not all the time. Maybe you get sick of it. You would get sick. But of it, for a for while. Sure. It would be like, oh, I'm seeing all these cities. Yeah. Uh, Getting uh, some culture. I'm still putting cash in the, you know, putting money in the bank. Yeah. And I don't have to actually have a place down here <laughs> or That's a car. Right. <laughs> I get, you know, you get your own car. I got a question for you about the Chicago lady. Okay. How'd you guys meet? What's this? Chicago? I met her up here. You met her up here and then she just, she, she siren songed you down <laughs> to Chicago? Well, we were in contact after we met up here, but okay. she had a hotel up here. And I Interesting. Her, so that's weird. How do you meet people like that? <laughs> what do you let mean? the let the listeners know. People are like, "How do I meet someone nowadays? How do you meet someone, Lance?" I don't know. It wasn't that hard. You went to a bar and we're just like, "What's up, lady?" And she was like, "Hey, is that it?" Well, it was a little bit more than that, but uh, what's yeah, the I, dance you know. of the Lance? <laughs> The Lance Dance. 
you know, it was uh, it was a good time going down to, you know, it was like uh, when I was down there for two days, it's almost too much time. And you stayed with her? Yeah. It was oh. like all the time. And it was fine. But when it was over, for me, it was over. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, there could never really be... I mean, you're living in different cities. Yeah, what can How you could do? I be dating somebody? Yeah. I don't want to be one of these schmucks that has a six-month-long uh, phone relationship and then, like, gets married or something, having not even lived with that person. Yeah. Not that I'm afraid of that, but I... You read about these things, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, I, I've, it's been, I've been dating her for two years, and finally I'm going to live with her. Like, I've never – you know what I mean? I mean, it's a different subject, but it's also similar. Yeah. So – but, yeah, it was all right. Um, uh, it was just that certain things just didn't work uh, together, you know, as far <laughs> as uh, – I don't know. It, it broke some, hot. Some weird – uh, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of... Uh, Is this the one you watch Star Wars with? Yeah. That was the best part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I had a good time other than that. But also, um, it was like... I was I was on expected, I don't know, to do things or, or to be on hand all the time. Yep. And sometimes uh, I, I want to just sit and do something else or 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 chill you want slants the time. schedules were not on sync sync yeah and so and and it was weird because uh we went to like go get uh some food or something for the rest of the day uh yeah on the second day and she was like being really short with me and and like uh and i didn't know why and i just uh-huh. thought i said i was like i don't know why you're angry at me right now uh-huh. and she's like i'm not being angry with you and then she kind of like let up after that I just love that, too, where it's like, why are you being angry? It's like, I'm not being angry. And right. it's like, okay, all right. <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> and, maybe, and, like, you know, things were good. Uh, this was your your little uh, Chicago tryst. <laughs> I guess. The Chicago affair. <laughs> the Chicago affair. The Chicago affair. <laughs> That's what it is, man. But, um, you get down there, you get some hot dogs, see Ditka. <laughs> Don't get any hot dogs. Listen but. to some Chicago. That's what I imagine everyone in Chicago does all the time. <laughs> they just listen to Chicago, the band. I mean, they did the kindliness of naming their band after your fair city. You might as well listen to them. But, yeah. It was, you know, um, I, I prefer things, I think, to be a little bit more loose or laid back. Yeah, and things were a little bit too regimented. You want some free love? It's what you want. Well, not even laissez faire. Well, I, you know, it's it's like uh, okay, you <laughs> there's, act like there's a bush you're here, beat some, and you're some beating awesome, around it. <laughs> awesome, yep, stud or something. Yep, but the fact of the matter is, uh, one time, two times, I've had enough. Wow, I, I need a break. Jesus. That's all I'm gonna say. You it's know what despicable. I mean? What, what do you mean? You, 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 this, okay, this, you can't. The problem hit. was that more was expected than me of me. I guess. You okay, can't just, you can't just hit it and quit it. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is that uh, I reach a point where I've had enough. <laughs> okay, and I want to just chill. chill. But then it's like, are we gonna have it again? Are we gonna do something like? Oh, are we taking a break? It's that kind of thing, and it's like yeah. I'm kind of like no, I'm 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 good. <laughs> I see. I think it was two people who had different expectations, yeah. and and so there were some kind of great expectations, bumps and uh, things going on yep. with as far as uh, yeah. So it can happen on different wavelengths. Different, yeah. It's never quite. That's uh, how it is, man. That's why you can keep getting out there, get in that game. <laughs> I guess. Slinging that game, <laughs> fifty cent, blood on the sand. That's what you got to do, man. You got to get your golden skull. <laughs> is what you're saying. Yeah, you do your own know. thing. You walk to the beat of your own drum. <laughs> I mean, I try. I try to be uh, amiable to yeah to things, but uh, also uh, this is the deal when when I'm around. <laughs> I see. 
You're like a tomcat. You just you, you come and go as you please. And maybe part of it was it was so cold out that we never went anywhere. And maybe that would have been better to break up the oh. action. You spent like the entire like two days hanging out in the room. Yeah. That's See, bad. That's bad. <laughs> That's bad. I mean, it was, yeah. I've done it. We went I've done outside it. a couple of times. I've done it. Like, but, you know, and again, I wasn't saying we should go somewhere. It was just too fucking cold out. Yeah. Um, this was like, so you're saying this is, <laughs> this is like 1984. And this is your fucking apartment where you had sex and bread <laughs> and water. Yeah, but if I had like somebody oppressing uh, me, maybe, maybe it, would it would have been, been more, more exciting. Fun. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Well, that, I think that's going to do it, though, for this episode of Born in the 80s. I was going to ask one thing, though, since we're on the subject of uh, oh, geez, you, oppression and, one more thing. and stuff like that. This is like Steve Jobs. Um, do you think, because now that like gay marriage is sweeping the nation. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you just say it like that. It's sweeping the nation. <laughs> gay is. marriage. It is. It's coming fast and hard. <laughs> okay. Uh, keep that until after you're married, all right? No anyway, sex before marriage. Up. Anyway. Um... Okay. Wrap it up, and we're gonna wrap it up. All right. So, so many sex puns. <laughs> all right. So, do you think that that when it becomes all legal everywhere, yep, that like a lot of the thrill is gonna be gone from these? <laughs> oh, okay. Don't you think? I think uh, on some level, if gay, if 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 gay marriage and gays as a whole becomes mm-hmm. totally normal, normal, mm-hmm. they're gonna hate it. They're gonna want to be like. They're gonna make create their own, own clubs where they like, get turned away at the door or something. They have to do something to spice it up. There's that spice of like it's an out. It's like it's it's the same thing. I bet you get when you are dating a girl in high school, but they get it as adults that mm-hmm. that like we're doing something that's fr- it's frowned upon. It's bad. It's so bad. And you get a that will be gone though. It's going away. <laughs> I, well, they want that, though. I'm sure that you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. That's the question. The touchy subject. I don't. I don't, I don't think it's unfair. <laughs> Point. Uh, I'm not saying that's the way it is. I'm saying, what if? What if? Okay. That's all I'm saying. I mean, isn't that the best part about dating in high school? Is you're not supposed. The, you're, the it's okay to it? be dating, but it's not okay to be dating that far. Like I ooh, suppose. I mean, shaking maybe my there, finger maybe, at you. Maybe there's maybe there's some validity to that. I do know that that there is. A lot of people that do like to come out publicly and have like a public coming out, right? You know, and they're past it. No, they've, t- they've, they're. But I mean, totally. Like the the whole thing with like Jodie Foster, it's right? Like, well, she's been gay for a long time. For but her, she, but she had to come out on TV. For her, normal, it had to be normal. this big spectacle, you know. Well, and that yeah. that and that 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 can happen. And I'm not saying that. Everyone's like that. It's not anything uh, that, that that street people don't also like to get, engage in things that are, f- ooh, that's that's not that's a bad thing or, or yeah. And I'm just saying or what the gay is society a bad thing. frowned upon exactly, even though they shouldn't. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's I like, guess. Ooh, what are we into now? You know, type of. So thing. what Lance is what saying when is that's gone when the th- the thrill. What's Lance is what's gone, saying is what happens next? They move to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> you moved to Russia, and they you can get oppressed there. Uh, holy cow! Um, but uh, you know, I mean, so what you're saying is basically bottom line. Lance is saying, gay people of America, enjoy your enjoy it, en- well, it lasts. <laughs> enjoy your because your 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 ability to f- say fuck you to society. I'm going to do what I want because basically it's going to be normal the pretty clock. soon. Your time is over. <laughs> <laughs> Your time is over. Oh dear God! <laughs> you watch out, watch out for Jesus, <laughs> or uh, what's his name, Jim Caviezel. Kev- Kevizel. It's, it's not over Kev- because we're ending it. It's over because it's not going to be as sexy. No, it might not be. That's true. The, you may not get the, as much the taboo, the thing. sexiness, the, the the the. Or maybe there'll be like one state without gay marriage, and you can like you just go, go there, go to Texas or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it is interesting. It's a double-edged sword because I think. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not gay, so I have no clue. What, because a what big you would part think. of like uh, gay scenes is having like these underground scenes and these areas that aren't supposed to be used for gay sex, and they're being used. And that's that's the that's true with every scene, though. 
Right. You know what I mean? Like music scene. It's like, ooh, this is an underground concert. You know, ooh, this is – And people you're, you're, get off on that. Exactly. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Everyone gets off on everything. But saying if you get off on gay stuff being not not uh, societally – If you're a gay listener, I want to know. <laughs> what? What is this shit? If you're a gay listener, we want to add you to a list. <laughs> We're making a list. <laughs> I'm making a list. Oh, Nobody's your, list making, I your, John. I need your address. I'm just saying. <laughs> I need your partner. I want your opinion. <laughs> okay. Would it ruin it for you? I don't think it would ruin it. Would I think... you stop being – no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Would you stop choosing to be gay? <laughs> no, no. Would you turn straight because that wasn't expected? I don't know. Uh, no, no. I, no, we don't want that. Obviously. But – um. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> you took this it's to a, a It's a dilemma. It is a dilemma. Yeah. There'll you, soon to be an Adam Sandler comedy. That's true. When you think about it, like Prohibition, alcohol was the shit during Prohibition. People probably drink more during Prohibition than they did before Prohibition. Yeah, you know. So enjoy it while it lasts because it's going to be normal pretty soon. I and mean, that, it is normal, but it's going to be accepted as normal pretty soon. Oh, and that that marriage, I, I got to say, it's not – I mean – I'm I'm happy for anybody that can get it that can't get it. <laughs> you're saying you want it, but, but for you're some, saying... for some, it will be a double-edged sword. Yeah, that's right. Nobody's in a marriage hurry to is... be merging assets and yeah. what goes along with that. Marriage is a dangerous game. It's a it's a you got to be ready for it. Yeah. Uh, but that goes for anybody. That's true. So that's you know I'm just Whew. saying nobody's going to be rushing out to get married because the rules have changed to find a loophole. Because when you get married, your shit is getting tied together. And yeah. In a way that that people are are for the rest of their lives, it seems. Yeah. You see people who are divorced. Yeah, they're always still talking about the people they used to be married to. There's always a reason to bring them up. Yeah. You ever notice that? Yeah, it's like, oh, well, you had a kid, you have to bring them up. You know, oh, well, who was a kid with? So yeah, it's pretty bad. Like yeah, when they when like uh, I, I think it was Utah. Gay marriage became legal for like a very short period of time because something was overturned. Like eight hours. Yeah, and like everyone <laughs> rushed rushed to the courthouses to get like married. Right. And it's like, I don't know if it's a good idea for you to be like, yeah, we rushed to get married. And it's like, I mean, maybe that maybe that's something you've been wanting to do for ages. Like, yeah, my my I'm married. Oh, my credit my credit score dropped. <laughs> <laughs> These are things you don't think about when you're rushing. Exactly. You got to make a big deal out of it. Yeah. That's unfortunate that you'd have to rush, though. And hopefully in the future, everyone can right. get married. Um, but don't rush into things. Is Lance, <laughs> Lance, and then Lance, you don't rush into things. No. You go to Chicago. You come back. You're like, yeah, it's over. <laughs> what well, didn't work out? Right, what's know. the next big city you're going to? <laughs> Minneapolis. I'm going to be disappointing somebody in New York very soon, John. Just All right. so you know. We look forward to it. Listeners look forward to that. Or too. New Jersey. They say New York, but you know, yeah, you end enough. up in New Jersey. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, good night and good luck. <laughs> your mother effing the headphones on. All right. Uh, just te- Oh, hello. All right. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Hello, my bright time girl. All right. Y'all beard up? Yeah. Beard up. I got a beer. Coors Light. Miller Light. The last. The last of the Coors. Silver Bullet. Final Silver Bullet's in the chamber. I got to figure out what episode number this is. 127. That's not right. I think I'm right. You you actually may be exactly right. Let me just double. I checked it because I wanted to see if you put that article up. I did not. You didn't. I will. <laughs> I kind of was sick and then I forgot and then I was getting the website updated for this new version. All right. Let's see here. Oh, shoot. I forgot it already. 127. You're totally right. You've been on it. You've been on the case. Can you can you talk a little bit? Yeah. Um, so, anyway. Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll just get into it. Ready? You yep. want to know what you want to talk about? Let's go. Let's do it. All right. 
Wow, we don't have any pre pre roll nonsense. Nope. No looking through cards for thirty minutes. Let's just do it. All right. Do it.